All right, come on. <laughs> That's all right. You are live. How's it going, everyone? It is I, PC, and I am here with a very special guest with me. Uh, I'm here with Mr. Carlos Pinero. He is a former uh, technician for Sega and GameWorks. <laughs> Introduce yourself, good sir. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm uh, Carlos Pinero. If you, the few that probably have heard of me, was uh, because of the Billy Mitchell case. I was actually uh, the tech that volunteered to uh, defend Billy Mitchell, and uh, I actually didn't even know who he really was. And I did it because I saw a message from Robert Childs on Facebook. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, this will take two or three days. How long can it take? And, man, we're getting to about a year and a half, almost two years now. Oh, yeah. And it, this, it's never ending. Yeah, this whole it's controversy. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Like, I mean, I, I, I found out about Billy, like, when I was younger. You know, I, I only watched, you know, the, the G4 TV special that they did on him. And, you know, that was the only way you watched, you know, if you knew anything about gaming. Uh, but, I mean, that's how I knew about Billy. And then I sort of kind of forgot until they brought him up recently uh, about this whole Donkey Kong controversy. Correct, correct. Yeah, what... Well, uh, well... Sadly, what happened was technology um, caught up. I mean, when those games were, when those games and that movie was done, nobody ever really thought that they were going to, somebody was going to upload it on YouTube and somebody can actually look at the game piece by piece and start seeing things that just looked a bit erratic. And it just, it just started a whole case at Twin Galaxies. Uh, for those that don't know uh, who or what Twin Galaxies is, <clears throat> Twin Galaxies is was the, I, I believe, some people will say no, but I believe that they were the first uh, national uh, scoreboard system started in the early, early 80s. Where Wasn't it people founded can... by Walter Day? Go ahead. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> it was, he founded it and it was his little baby there and it was a great idea where the best of the best from around the nation can send their score in and the person with the highest would be on a on a scoreboard and this was remember this was pre-internet this was pre-bbs i don't know if you know what the bbs was but bbs is where you you would take your commodore or your pc and you would dial in to some servers kind of like the prodigy or aol was but before that even existed so this was literally by hand and by letters and referees that would volunteer. So, and it just yeah. exploded and it grew into this great thing. And so because they hold these scores, they're also who Guinness Book of World Records go to for their information when it comes to game scores. So right. it was um, it was a real neat idea that just blew up. Right. Well, it blew up in a good way. So, uh, how how did you know about Billy? Like, how did you find out about <clears throat> him? Or you know, I, I well, guess... I'll give you the real fast. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the fast version. The fast version was <clears throat> the fast version was that when I was uh, when I was a tech at a uh, at um, the venue at the arcade venue, um, they were just tossing out some great games and this i was in my early 20s i was in my early 20s and i'm like how can you how can you throw away this art literally they were fantastic games and they were being thrown away at the time they still weren't worth that much money and ebay didn't exist yet right so i um <clears throat> so i took them and i started collecting them i would fix them and put it in a box and i said one day one day watch i'm gonna have my own arcade I even have a name for it and everything. It was perfect. But 20 years later, well, like 15, 20 years later, I was still paying for storage. I didn't do a damn thing with them. And arcades were dead. Right. Dead. Yeah, I mean, you and can that, literally... that is because yeah. the uh, video game crash of 1986. 
Well, right. the that was uh, eighty four or eighty four. I'm but, sorry. I'm sorry. Gosh. <laughs> but uh, but also, what happened was <laughs> you can now the the PlayStations and the Dreamcast at the time just the the quality was so amazing, and you can get a disc with the classics or download an emulator, and and you didn't have to pay and go to an arcade. You had choices now at right. home. So that really killed the arcade and especially the prices. <clears throat> so I decided, wait, give me a sec. <clears throat> I decided, um, you know what? I'm not going to do anything with these boards, but I feel real bad throwing them away. I did a look up on Google and I found arcade game sales. Arcade game sales is Robert Child's place. Right. So I rushed over there. I put everything in crates and I rushed over there and, uh, I met Robert. I go, hey, Robert, look, I got a bunch of arcade boards. Uh, please make me a deal. I feel real bad throwing them away, but I don't care what the deal it is. Uh, whatever you say, I'll take it because from here I'm going to the trash. So he made me a bad deal, but, hey, I'm a man of my word, and I sold them, I sold them all the boards in hmm. one shot. Really? But then, hmm. Yeah, but then he gave me a tour of his shop. And by this time, I had not worked on arcades in maybe like 15 years, and I loved it. He has a, he really has a great, beautiful shop. I mean, he's got all the parts and little boxes. Everything's very organized. Right. It it might all look cabinets. messy if you thought, yeah, but he's got he's got a. It's a great shop to work at, and and we chatted for a while. So I added him and his company on Facebook. That was it. Ah, so fast. Yeah, go ahead. Go right ahead. Fa fast forward about a year and a half later, and I see this long, huge post about a converter. It was like two or three pages long of how a converter works, of uh, something about Billy Mitchell. I'm like Billy Mitchell sounds familiar. So I can I. It was like two in the morning. I replied to it. Something silly with oh yeah I used to I used to create converter circuits and yeah in layman's term this is what's going on and I made that three page version into like two lines and I went to sleep man I woke up the next morning to like five messages three DMs two text messages which I never asked how they got my phone number but um everybody oh we gotta talk we gotta talk and so I rushed to Roberts I'm like what's going on. He tells me about this Billy Mitchell situation with the converter and a game. And and I, for selfish reasons, I'm like, hey, uh, if you don't mind, I'll check it out for you. You know, I just want to get my hands on the electronics again. And he goes, oh, you'll do that? I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I, I volunteered. I didn't get paid for that. Right. And I'm thinking, oh, this will be two or three days. So I meet Billy Mitchell like two days later. Because they, they gathered everything. Everything I tested was what I was told was the cabinet he did one of the games on. It had two game boards. He brought me two game boards that he did two of the games that they were challenging. Uh, the converter uh, the converter that they said stated was used. Um, the cool. laptop that was used for the third capture. It was like almost original everything. So, and that's what they had me testing. Right. So it wasn't the same uh, setup that they <clears throat> initially did when they sent the tape over, was it? Was it the two score converter? Yes. Yes. It was the two the two bit score converter. Yeah, two bit score converter. With the with the receipt <laughs> after, I think after like two or three weeks of working on the stuff, I did release a video. I, that, I saw ooh, that. I think I sent you a link, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that. <laughs> well, that was a short one, but I had done one for like, it was like 38 minutes where I literally show the hookup, the video, the scanning, the gameplay. I got yeah. really into detail on that one, but but boy, was I bombarded with hellfire for that one. And I'm really like, what, what else going on here? And... um it was interesting because I, I was able to speak to some really, really, really great people who had um, from Twin Galaxies, who had also, yeah, who had also been right. 
looking into the stuff and working on it. And um, what it's interesting because what I thought I was looking for all of a sudden became very clear. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. It's kind of like that saying where they say uh, in, in a crowd, a mother, a mother recognizes her baby's cry um, in a crowd of babies crying. Well, you working, you work long enough on the game board looking for something specific and all of a sudden you start recognizing anomalies that only a certain system can do. Right. Kind of like an arcade and per its design and it starts becoming much clearer why and what it does and why it does it different than state uh, an emulator Right. Or an all-in-one, or a converted board, or a board with different RAM. Because people need to realize that back then, when MAME was a thing, like, you know, the way that you had to play it, like, you had to flip your TV on the side, because the, the, the game was, like, uh, horizontal? Well, not horizontal. Yeah, it was, like, vertical. vertical. Yes, vertical. And right, you had to this flip one... your TV... <laughs> <laughs> but this wasn't this was not every game. Oh. Um so it right, was only no, Donkey was, Kong. No, Donkey Kong was a vertical game uh, from the early 80s. Uh wow. Asteroid was vertical. Uh, an example is Popeye. Popeye. Popeye was a horizontal game. Ah. It wasn't vertical. It was a a wide game. Uh Super Mario Brothers uh is a wide angle it, it's a horizontal game. It's uh Galaga well Galaga is a vertical game. That yeah, one vertical the, shooter. Yep. Yeah, the screen is turned on its side. And that's just to get more more length, but it's actually a four by three. Four by three is like your old television tube, which it's actually longer than its height. So they call it a four by three. Ah. But like with Donkey Kong, the game output is actually a mid resolution Seven by eight. Seven by eight. So, yeah, seven by eight. So, if you were to draw perfect squares, perfect ended squares, it would be eight squares down, seven eight, seven squares across, right. and that is your your game resolution for it. That's why uh, converting Donkey Kong to a regular TV <clears throat> would have the a little piece of the top and the bottom cut off right. because your regular TV screen cannot naturally handle those scans. So you would have to actually shrink the V, the V hole. Yeah, you, you'd have to if, shrink it. If it has that feature. Right. If it has it. Because uh, not all most screens have Yeah, had most HD TVs, they, some, some of them do have that feature, but any like normal TV probably wouldn't. Well, HD <laughs> HCTV was not a thing. I know. <laughs> no, no, but no. I'm saying now, if you, if you were to play it now, well, there's actually a. It's interesting because there really is um, there's many elite players that I've met that I've spoken to that just they can't stand it. They they just cannot play um, these old classic games. On these flat panel TVs, right? They can't do it. Um, one of the reasons is also the latency, the little tiny delay. But their yeah. biggest reason is um, because these old games, the resolutions are so low that today's TV is so sharp that even Mario's nose looks square. <laughs> it's literally like three squares. The barrels look like ladders, round ladders. You have all these wild uh, anomalies. <clears throat> Back then when they were creating these games, they always knew that the dots on the screen were a little bit blurry. So they took a lot of artistic freedom to like put like one blue square on the back of the eye of the white, but because of the blurriness of the right. screen, it looked, it looked good. It looked well, it looked rounded. But these sharp TVs... You play these really old low resolution games, and it's like it's so darn sharp that 
it kind of yeah. almost sucks you out of it. Yeah, it, um, it's like when people try to play some of these older games, like on you know 4K TV. It's like you know, oh, I don't see no yeah, difference at all. I don't. No, no, no. Yeah, forget it. But these really the old classics, like all of a sudden you play like um, Cubert, <laughs> and all of a sudden Cubert's nose doesn't it, you know normally look like it used to look like a an elephant round elephant trunk. <laughs> yeah. Now on these new screens, it it looks like. It looks like an escalator. And you're like, yikes. Because it's it's such low resolution, so sharp on a humongous TV. Right. So you literally see the blocks. Well, like the old games, the there were like eight by eights, the the sprites. And all of a sudden these big TVs, like you can literally just put your face two inches away and and draw it draw the cartoons with sixteen colors. Which was amazing that they were able to do it, yeah, and create all these images. But uh, a lot of elite players, they will tell you that they they will buy an old tube TV just to play their classics, right. just to play them. I, I was watching that video by uh, the Fine Bros where kids react to old consoles and stuff. Oh, and dear yeah, God, saw, they they were like, "Where's the HDMI input?" And I'm like. There was none. There the was NES. none. <laughs> and then, like, and yeah, the NES is bad because it, it it it's not better than Xbox 360. I'm like, no, no, dude, you're a douche. <laughs> you know, it's funny that I tell people no, no one believes me at first, but I have no arcade systems, no video game boxes in my house, huh. zero. And I used to collect consoles. I mean, if you go on my Facebook. And go to my photo album, you'll see my console collection and my arcade boards, and it all says sold now. Um, uh-huh. But um, you'll, I'll see these kids playing Xbox 360 with like 20 buttons, yeah. and they're playing it. They're playing it hard. And I remember, I mean, the most complicated joystick I ever used in a video game was uh, was on the Sega Saturn. I remember game- that. For a game called Nights into Dreams. Oh where boy, I remember that. It was that a game. round joy yeah, it was a round joystick and you use the analog thumb, which was a new thing. Yep. And the and the uh four pointer digital um directional and you would make this character, this purple character, like float. Float up and down and in and out and it was it was wild. It was wild. I mean, I was I was shocked by it. But that was really the last and most complicated controller I ever used. Fast forward 10 years later, I go visit my nephews, and <laughs> they're playing a, a wireless controller. It's got 20 buttons, and they're not even... Not only are they not looking at it, they got headphones, and they're talking to like 20 other people <laughs> through this thing. Yeah. It's... It's wild stuff. It's wild oh, yeah. stuff. I mean, because, I mean, I, I was born in the 90s, and, you know, that that thing was just starting to take shape. You know, online gaming started with the Dreamcast. Uh, yes. Unfortunately. Well, the, yeah, the, because the Dreamcast was the first to actually include online. the modem. Fantasy Star. Modem. Yeah, I remember playing Fantasy Star online, too. Um <laughs> and I can't wait till they come out with it uh, on Steam. I I have so many memories with it. I actually uh, have it on emulator right now, playing it. Uh, gosh, that that was my first experience with online gaming. Well, actually, that's a lie. RuneScape. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, uh, really, do you really want to know what my one of my first video games was? What it was for the IBM PC XT. I was born in seventy seven. So um, it was an orange screen, and the game was called Zork. 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 You you don't want to look this up, especially don't YouTube it. It has zero graphics. It literally Not starts by saying, <laughs> by saying, hello, you are in a forest. Not saying, typing it. And you say, look around, and it says, there's a bunch of trees. And you say, move forward. And it says, 
you have reached a shed. It's like, all right, open the door. It's, it seems empty. And you look around, and you have to figure this thing out. It's all in your head. Right. But it was called Zork. Zork. Uh, have you yeah. ever played a game called a Kalabeth? No, I don't recall that That is one, one of the first... Uh, it's one of the early Ultima games, actually. Uh, well, it's... it's ult- A lot of people call it Ultima Zero. Uh, it was developed by Richard Garriott, uh, the same guy that made Ultima. Uh, and it, it's basically the same... That Well, it, it does have graphics, but it's all wireframe. And oh, nice! You know, okay. It's it like you had to use your imagination because you know graphics, and, and this is on an Apple II uh, monochrome computer. <laughs> uh, no yeah. co- no color. Just well, it was it was green. I mean, that's the only thing I remember. <laughs> but yeah, it, was... Uh, it it was very primitive and very. Uh, I mean, I played it on my uncle's computer because you know he was the only one that had a computer. My very first computer that I ever got was sort of the same thing as what you had. Uh, it was orange screen, not, uh, orange and black, and you could only type stuff in it. You couldn't play games at all. Right, it was all text-based. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, and, yeah. and it used floppy disks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, right. yeah, uh, getting back, uh, I'm sorry I got off topic there. Uh, getting back to the Billy Mitchell thing. Uh, yes, yes. Go so, ahead. so how, like, so did they? They asked you to uh, try to recreate the footage uh, that Billy did, right? Right. Well, what what they um, the way it started was they were telling me uh, they had told me a portion of what uh, people were claiming um, could not have been done. And what I had what I had stated was, well, we're what the situation here is that what we're looking at is everybody that would submit a videotape or record their video game at the time was simply a camcorder set up on a tripod right. Or, or right over their shoulder, aimed to the screen, and you can see the person playing. <clears throat> Billy Mitchell's video submissions were different. They were done using a method now that everybody recognized called direct feed. Right. Now, direct feed was just something really nobody was using. Now, to not get too technical, I'm going to try to make it as layman's as possible. Um, the situation was that at first they were saying uh, the arcade and what Billy's tapes look like are completely different. But if you waited long enough, you would actually find slight resemblance. Well, what I was, what I said, oh, well, because there's a major difference. When you're recording with a camcorder aimed to your screen, your screen is scanning at a different rate than the camera is capturing. Right. Okay. Because of the frame rate, right? Absolutely. The frame rate and the refresh rate of the screen versus the frame rate of the camcorder. Now, if you wait long enough, watch enough footage, luckily these games, the average gameplay is almost two hours to reach these million scores. So you have to watch them frame by frame. It's really horrible. But it's almost like seeing a spinning rim at a certain speed, it starts looking like it stopped and spins backwards. It's a refresh rate for our eyes. Well, eventually, if you watch enough of it, you're going to get a synced image. It's going to look fantastic. Where it, you can see the, the uh, transition clear instead of having like multiple uh, stages on one screen. And, um, <clears throat> and that was what everybody was used to seeing. With a direct feed, it's a whole different operation. With a direct feed, because the cable itself is also transmitting the sync signal into the VCR or into the recording device or even the capture board, it makes a much clearer, a much better, and and the refresh rate and the... uh, the, um, the 
refresh rate and the hertz of the screen are always matched up right. much, much, much better because the signal is hardwired. <clears throat> it's hardwired into the recording device. <clears throat> so, of course, you're going to have major differences in sharpness in color crispness and and you don't get that wave that you see when you're recording a, a monitor oh yeah so so i was of the impression i was really heavily in the impression of oh yeah you know it's all timing and syncs and camera there's actually a lot of things that i didn't even show in my videos like i even did one experiment i mean anybody can do this experiment where you take your even your regular cell phone but you know keep your eye on the road take your cell phone put it on video mode hold it vertical just long way and while you're driving at about 40 to 50 miles per hour look out your window the side window and record the trees just record the trees that are passing you by there's this really interesting effect that what happens is the trees start looking like they're leaning forward like they're leaning ahead of the car. When you look at the playback, the top of the tree is on the left of the screen and the bottom of the tree is in the middle, as if the trees are starting to bend forward to the direction that you're driving. And this is all because the way the camera works, it's it's the top of the screen is recorded before the bottom of the screen. Yeah. And if you're going fast enough, the motion blur is going to give you that effect that it looks like they're leaning forward. And these are these are just timing principles that um, I wanted to prove and, and show. And once I did my first video about it, that was really where my first the first time my name really went out there. Because um, I didn't want to make a write-up. I don't write very well. I write like a doctor. <laughs> but, I mean, I can write you a schematic, uh, a technical paperwork. Oh, I love those. But when it's like i got to write a novel ugh, or a story, I mean, my writing yeah. is reading. And, I'm and, not gonna and most to people you. like me, I, I prefer the <laughs> layman's term or the, the working man's term, analogy. <laughs> so, so I decided... I would release videos and um, I still have them. It's just I have them unlisted because, you know, that part of the investigation is over. But I said I would release videos because visually people can intake a lot more than than reading. Reading, they can get very bored and not understand what you're saying. And, and he's, not saying, he's not saying you're stupid, people. <laughs> right. And he's it's it's a lot stupid. easier... <laughs> it, like right now we're talking about uh screen rates refresh rates and the average person can be like why the fuck do i care like what, what the hell you know I, <laughs> I i guess or i don't know if you're trying to confuse me we're in a video i just say okay look at this screen on the left and look at this one and right. we're going to slow it down and now watch and all of a sudden you see that the two images are different and it's like oh right oh. Ah, oh, that's that. That's what's yeah, that. Yeah, because when I was reading all that stuff last night, I was like, gosh, I don't even know what all this means. And that's, Correct. that's you know, why, you know, I have somebody like you explain it to me, and it's like, ah, oh, now I get it. <laughs> right, right. And that's, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of tech stuff that's really going on back oh, there. Oh, yeah. And, um, but... <clears throat> When I released that first video explaining all that stuff, uh, man, I started getting bombarded with with attacks and oh, well, verbal attacks. That's what that's what the internet's for, you know. So it's um, I'm like, what the hell am I doing wrong? I mean, I worked really hard on this stuff, and eventually I I kept working on it, and what was being requested kept changing. I'm like, what, what's going on here? And eventually, once I did enough work, I'm like, oh, oh man, I see what I see. What we're looking at, I, I see it now. And it was interesting because um, I had flown to Banning, California, where there was a 
really huge arcade and pinball event over there. And I was working so hard on this stuff. And I was hoping, I was really hoping to, to be done with the investigation. All right. But <clears throat> I was... What I kept having to remind people is that I was in a very, very lucky position. I was in a position that 99.9% of no one else was in, yeah. which was I had access to the equipment stated was used, the arcade boards, the cabinet, the converter, the um, even the capture card. That was used for one of the recordings. Um, this was stated to me that these were these were what was used. So no one else had access to this stuff. Now, mind you, during this investigation, um, Twin Galaxies had their guy also doing this, uh, doing his own stuff. But every couple of days, we would have to get on a call and get together and um, for it to be valid, anything that I would discover or anything anyone else discovered, you had to share with the other techs and they had to be able to duplicate it. If not, it was considered invalid, an invalid discovery. And all this stuff was being typed on the Twin Galaxies dispute page where if you went through that, that thing's like 380 pages now. Yeah, it's and a lot of it is gibberish, but it is it's really really long. Um, so that gets really bad and really confusing. So man, I think I lost my train of thought. Where was <laughs> I? Well, let me fast forward. Um, eventually, I started running a bunch of tests. Oh, I was at Banning. I was hoping to be done. Um, but I spoke up there and I won't lie. I was nervous because I'm like, man, these guys are going to eat me if they're almost virtually eating me online. But you know what? These, uh, believe it or not, these arcade game guys, as competitive as they are, when you walk into their turf or like go to an arcade event or gaming event, they really are real cool people. All of them. They all are. It's their element. They're comfortable there. They don't feel like weirdos. Uh, <laughs> we get it. There ain't a lot of girls here, and we're fine with it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. And um, and we all have a good time. And I met I made a lot of friends, people that uh, were not believers, people that were Billy believers, people that were just neutral, and they were all very kind. And uh, there's a video out there where I'm doing my speech. And I, at the end, I state, you know, there's still about three or four things that are bothering me that as long as I still have access to this equipment, I'm going to keep working on it. But I promise I would I would come and and bring it to you, whatever I find. So um, unfortunately, I wasn't done by then. Uh, but it, it didn't it wasn't much longer after that, that I had uh, I had a breakthrough that was just too darn large. Where I'm like, damn, it just a bunch of things just fell in place, and um, and it was uh, it wasn't good, and um, I was like, damn, man, that's there's no way around this. This is it. The work all of a sudden became from like I'm ninety percent certain we can be we'll be able to do something to boom, one hundred point zero zero percent. Oh, shoot. Sorry, I was supposed to do something, but I forgot. 100.0.0% that I was not going to be able to do something because per design, it just could not accomplish what we were, what we and I, myself, were seeking to find on this equipment. Yeah. And and I, I was I, like... I did watch the, the little uh, gameplay footage you had. <clears throat> I mean, there was definitely some things off about it, uh, like the colors, uh, and I'm I'm talking about the one that you sent to Twin Galaxies, right? Oh, the captures. Yeah, the some captures. Of the captures. Oh, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I did. I did a a couple of uh, 
uh, captures uh, through a VCR, not through a VCR, through a computer, with adjustments, without adjustments, with uh, a whole bunch of variety. There was another tech, oh, another guy who actually recently did some more testing. Man, he did at least 30 plus. I don't, I don't want to say his name because I didn't ask permission if I can use it. But he did a lot of testing. Like he literally labeled it um, arcade to converter to VCR to DVD. And then it would be arcade to computer to DVD to VCR. Then computer to converter to screen to output to VCR to DVD. It, he did so many, so many tests that I was like, oh my gosh. Um, you know, what do you say to that? I mean, he really, he really went the extra mile. I, I'm just, I don't think it was needed and required because by a certain point, you know, by a certain point, you know, your goldfish is dead when it's sleeping on the top of the water. It's right. like, he's not sleeping. He's got X's on his eyeballs. It's just <laughs> it's no way around it. It's just, it's just. It, it sounds design. like it sounds like hard work. Well, it was tedious. Very tedious. It, it, it wasn't the hardness; it was the tediousness. Because I was also looking at other players online, and these champion players—I mean, their games go for about two hours, and you're going frame by frame looking for something. And that's the nice thing on YouTube, if you know the hotkeys. You can even even this that we're doing here, you can pause it and go frame by frame and get me in a point where I got like one eye open and one cross and looks all weird. Oh yeah. But you can go frame by frame. And I did that for so many gameplays. It it was at the point where I swear to you, my I don't know how my wife didn't break a stick over my head, but she literally was at the point if she had to hear that. Damn, Donkey Kong! Bum, 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 bum. One more time, <laughs> she was gonna stab me with a kitchen knife and frame the dog or something. And that's like that. supposed to be a classic game, <laughs> you know. But when you but hear that same crazy song over and over and over, and that's just me going back and forth, <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, and watching all these other elite game players, it's um. It's it's mind boggling, crazy. It's so crazy. so I was gonna ask you, uh, when did you find out that uh, Twin Galaxies decided to uh, <clears throat> decided to get rid of all of his scores? Uh, which I heard they got rid of his Donkey Kong, and you know they also got rid of his Pac Man, his perfect Pac Man score. Oh, they got rid of all his scores, all of them. I was. I was shocked. Um, it was about three or four days. It was about three or four days after I did. Uh, um, I released my findings, which was there was a timeline. We, um, the owner of of Twin Galaxies, had told us, "Look, I can't expand no more time." His side had already finished their testing. Other people had done their testing. We were able to expand to get a little extra time to the end of the weekend, and we were on a time crunch. And I released my findings really late on the last day. And about three days later, they um, they removed all of Billy Mitchell's scores. Yeah. A couple of days after that, I I was contacted by the owner of Twin Galaxy, and I I shared my opinion to him where I stated I believed I believed that it was a very it was a very harsh thing to do because if the plan was to knock down all of the scores I believe we should have been told so we can test all the scores. Right. But we were really only testing honestly just one Donkey Kong one and Billy Mitchell has a lot of scores. 
not like a Todd Rogers 200 or 100 scores and stuff, but he had a lot of scores and important scores too. So, and by the time this investigation was going, Billy wasn't even on the top nine or 10. He wasn't even up there on Donkey Kong anymore. And some of these scores, they predate all the way back in the early 80s or late oh, 80s. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, they were, they were staples. So, I mean, like, now there's an argument about the Pac-Man score. But the catch is, like, the Pac-Man wasn't ever really anything that was disputed. Yeah. Now it's down now it's really down to the semantics like like you know were the videos really recorded correctly did he take too long of a break you know the what were the rules you yeah. have to also you have to also remember um the context of when was this done right. okay you know if if we looked at videos of our friends or our parents in the 60s smoking uh, marijuana or whatever, <laughs> and we're like, oh, my gosh. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What was it? What was the rule back then? You know, like everybody in high school was smoking cigarettes, <laughs> you know, to the point where, I mean, you can walk in with them yeah. and even smoke at work and at restaurants. You can't you cannot compare what you're seeing what happened back then to the rules of today. Now there's a lot of argument going on of of you know there's certain rules and stuff, but that's way beyond that's way beyond anything I was put in place to test. My job was simply to demonstrate if the arcade can produce the images that we were seeing on the tapes, that was it. When it comes to my opinions on the matter or from hearsay or what I've been told or, or stuff like that, because it's not something I, I was able to test myself and have a 100% certainty. I have to be very cautious of what I express and what I express, I'm trying to be as most honest as possible, Right. which is, I can tell you this because I tested it 100%. I tested it down to 100% certainty. Right. That portion, you know, I have other texts that tell me, well, but you didn't try this and you didn't try that. And you didn't try. This. And I'm like, look, man, like a car has 5,000 parts. If we're going to go down and test the torque, the, the the pressure on every screw just to see if the radio vibrates, I mean, we'll be at this forever. I mean, you got to you have to really make the decision and, and test the primary parts. I remember in engineering right. school, I know I'm going on a rant here, but I remember in engineering school, you know, they would uh, they would pose a question. And in one of them, they would always use a car because it was the most common thing anybody ever worked on. And they would say, the car is doing this. And almost everybody's first answer is, all right, pop the hood. We'll start from there. And it was interesting because the professor would tell us, why? I mean, you're popping the hood because it's the biggest part of the car, the most important part, the engine. But that 5,000-pound machine can be demobilized by a bad engine key that weighs two ounces so more of the story is you you don't have to look at everything just look at right. the primary important, primary important thing yeah and that was down to the testing i remember when i started getting bombarded when i was releasing the first videos i had decided you know what i'm gonna hide these videos and i'm just gonna simply focus on the thing I had in front of me, the cabinet, the video, the tapes, and do the comparisons. And that's what I stuck to. Because it's the only thing that I can defend with 100% certainty. Anything else, I mean, you want to get technical? I can, I can literally say, hey, 
I actually never seen Billy play the games that are on those tapes because you don't see him on those tapes. So I cannot, with 100% certainty, tell you if he played those games. That's that's getting technical. Now, if you ask my opinion, I've seen the guy play. He's got skill. And I, I uh, I've, believe I've seen his uh, Twitch streams. He, he, I mean, here's the thing. He is legit. Uh, oh, definitely. There, there's no doubt about that. I, I think, you know, I think what people just want to know is whether or not he used MAME or he actually used a legit arcade cabinet. And, and I mean, I mean, looking at the footage, you know, it's, it's really hard to say uh, because, I mean, just the by even looking at, you know, the way the images load up and, you know... I have, and this is something I said last night. I said that maybe there is a zero point zero 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 one percent chance that there's a arcade cabinet that loads up sort of similarly to main, or maybe he played it on a main cabinet, which they do exist out there. But I, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt, you know, because that that that's that's Correct. usually the way I see it. Correct, correct. No, absolutely. Absolutely, and I agree with you. Um, the But also, you didn't test the cabinet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it's hard to, yeah, to make that assumption, though. You, you'd have to test the cabinet. Uh, but, right. I mean, I, I think, though, that that's the main thing. Uh, well, it's not just that. I mean, if Billy would have stated, yes, I used MAME, uh, you know, and just admit, you know, that, you know, he did that or, you know, j just try to explain himself. Maybe a lot of people wouldn't be ragging down on him so much. You know what I mean? But, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess he's just, uh, he's just, you know, being protective of his legacy and, you know, that, that that's how everyone is, you know. It, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here a little bit. He, Go ahead. Um, um, it is it is a complicated situation. Uh, I won't. I'm not gonna lie about that. I mean, <clears throat> we're talking about decades of gaming, going to conventions and and situations, and there really there is. There is a lot of bad blood, a lot of bad data. I mean, even even the Twin Galaxies uh, dispute form. I mean, you can literally erase ninety five percent of the stuff written there, and it will still be clear. Uh, the tech parts, the tech parts will still be clear. Um, there's a lot of people that are mad. One of the most common things I'll find is uh, you'll have people comparing him to who he was in the movie. <laughs> well, they took a lot of liberties for that. In in reality, if you ever meet the guy, he's actually he actually likes his fans. He's really nice. He's really nice in person. Um, he always treated me kind. They're always kind to me. I just had my recent fallout because of, the, of a situation with uh with a legal document that uh that just it really left me livid i was like really really angry about it so by then i'm like you know what i'm why am i quiet why am i quiet if i have truth on my side but um it is it is a complicated situation i cannot answer for him i don't know what the plan is i don't know what they're up to uh, but I could tell you with certainty um, my portion of the work, and it 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 was it became an adventure really. It something I thought was going to be two or three days. I mean, we're down to a year and a half now, yeah. And now there's a, a case and potential lawsuit. To court yeah, it, got, it's not. Yeah, the lawsuit ain't. Uh, happening right now it, right now he is going through the process 
Right, right. But they're serious. I mean, they're serious. I'm not going to oh, yeah. lie. Uh, it, you, you know, people can make fun of so, the typos, the techni- the, the Which that's, what that's the every lawsuit you're going to see. You're going to see typos in every lawsuit. <laughs> right, right. But but you're going to, some people be like, oh, this looks like a joke. But, um, but no, they're serious. I mean, they're, yeah. they are serious. Um, hey, you want to take a, a question here? We got, a. I'm seeing here a Dr. Green Thumb. Wow, like this guy him. rambles about nothing. <laughs> yeah. If he's, if he's still there, hey, uh, ask a question if you like. Uh, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I forgot about the chat. <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. Uh, my man, I was by his side for all this. Get it? <laughs> oh, uh, that's, that is Steve, Steve Kleizek. Steve Kleizek was one of those people, if you remember the story I told earlier, yeah. of I replied to Child's, Mr. Child's um, uh, Facebook message, and Steve Kleizek was one of those that when I woke up in the morning, <laughs> had all these messages, we got to talk, we got to talk. <clears throat> Steve Kleizek was by my side most most of the whole time that I was working on those cabinets. I literally, I'm sorry, Steve, but I literally at some point I wanted to break a brick over his head. <laughs> he was really... Hopefully he's still listening. Oh, yeah, but we talk all the time. But uh, he um, he was so determined to to help, to help his friend and stuff. Like, he would call me like, hey, hey, have you found something? Hey, we got to go. He, he would technically be like my scheduler. Like, hey, the, the shop is open today till 5. Uh, and we got to hurry. We got to hurry. We're running out of time. And sometimes I'll be like, man, I need a break. You got to give me a break. Uh, And um, and so a lot of the running of the boards and the videos that you see of the captures, it's him playing. Because if it was me playing, um, I lose by like the second barrel. I don't, I can't even pass the first (laughs) stage. It's terrible. Uh, so, I, I'm not a good Donkey Kong player either. Don't don't feel ashamed. <laughs> no, I'm not ashamed. Shoot. Uh, up to me, I'll never see Donkey Kong again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Professor Azrael asked, uh, sir, how do you feel about Toby Fox's retro callbackish game, Undertale? Have you ever played Undertale? Nope. I have no clue. Uh, it, it's basically. Uh, have you Have you heard of the Toho series? No. Uh, I don't it's, have it's, a video <laughs> game system here. Oh, uh, okay. I don't so, play games here. Is that it, crazy? It, it's basically an RPG with uh, elements like you know those classic uh, shooter games. Uh, basically, uh, Toho okay. is a uh, it's a vertical uh, uh, shooter like yeah all, uh, you know those Japanese type of shooter games. Uh, shoot yes, em ups. yes. That, that's basically what it is. <clears throat> It's really popular in Japan. All right. What do you want? My opinion on it? My opinion is I don't know about it. <laughs> you don't know about Actually, it. Actually, that's not even a, that's not an opinion. That's a fact. I don't know anything about it. Okay, I, so... I uh, I can tell you more, but... Yeah, my, my co-host was supposed to be here. I couldn't figure out how to get Google Hangouts to work. And he, uh, he's like, you couldn't figure out how to invite me. I'm sorry. I, oh, I, I think there's a plus sign like in the corner or something uh, to add another person. I, I tried, I tried, and it didn't work. It's just being weird. Uh, I think you have to have their email. But uh, getting back to uh, uh, you, you, you claim that you don't know for sure if Billy actually played the game. Like uh, you said, you we were talking about this earlier, actually. Uh, oh, well, I stated that. I stated that as. Um, as a technicality and what i mean about that is <clears throat> is that when i express what i the purview of the work i was doing it has to it has to stay in the border of what i had access to right. so in so as an example i i can state based on the work i did i cannot answer to you if Billy Mitchell actually played the game, because I'm 100% certain that I didn't see anybody playing the game. I didn't know the guy when he played him. I wasn't around when they were recorded. Right. And 
And when I was doing my testing, it was based on videos. But 99.9% of every single person that deals with this thing says, yeah, it's Billy Mitchell's tapes. Yeah, it's Billy Mitchell's game. Yeah, that's Billy Mitchell. And Billy Mitchell's like, yeah, I did those scores. I did that game. So um, technically, sticking to facts, I don't know because I didn't see it. But per hearsay, an opinion is 99.99998% that he did it. Now, when it comes to the technical work, I can tell you with 100% certainty the portion that I worked, why I'm certain about it and the tests that I ran and the comparisons I did and the voltage checking and the, and the component testing and, and um, even looking down to the schematics where it's like, Oh, okay. This will never um, operate in a certain fashion because it's just incapable of it. So it, it um it that I can give you answers to. Right. You can give answers to the technical aspects of it. To the to the technical aspects that I worked on. That you worked on. That I worked on. Yes. Uh I wanted to sort of get into the 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 tapes themselves, like the, the footage that Billy submitted uh to Twin Galaxies. Uh I was gonna ask you like in in your research, uh, the when you try to uh, replicate what Billy was trying to, you know, uh, you know, do, sort of, uh, right, right. You uh, you couldn't tell like just looking at the images that he, you know, if if it was from the arcade cabinet or you know he was playing it on a main system or anything like that. No, not at the beginning. Uh, not at the beginning because I didn't recognize. Uh, I didn't recognize enough. Any of the signatures? Uh, right. I didn't recognize any of the signatures. I wasn't an avid player. I wasn't, uh, you know, I'm not a high scorer. And I haven't worked on these arcades. I mean, who really slows down the gameplay to a frame a second just to learn certain signatures? I mean, we're ta- we're talking about submarine scanning systems. Which I mean, in earlier MAME uh, systems, uh, I mean earlier MAME uh, emulators, you could actually edit it to make it look like the arcade. Like you could get rid of those signatures. <laughs> you you gotta be very dedicated. You'd have to be dedicated. Of I mean, course. I mean, I hear you're an artist. Oh yeah. So, I mean, you can do it. Oh yeah, but I'm talking. I'm talking about it. It's a how can I put it? Okay, it's like people that claim that we never went to the moon, right? But I love NASA. I mean, I <laughs> go there if I can go every year. I'll go every year. I got year. a NASA shirt somewhere over there. <laughs> uh, uh, it's my preferred. It's my preferred uh, amusement park. But. You you have people that claim we never went to the moon, but when you go to NASA and look at these rockets, it's like, man, so they sure designed a lot of things that would get us there just to fake us out. A guidance system, the programming, the team, the you know, the gyroscope, the escape pod, the, right. all these things. You look at this rocket, because if you ever go to NASA in Florida, <laughs> The lunchroom the is Kennedy literally Center. Yeah, the Kennedy Space Center. Gosh. It, oh man, the lunchroom, you're literally sitting under a rocket. Yeah. It's a real rocket. It's just it was never used. And um and you look up and you have these engineers all around and you can ask them questions and they point out every single part. So what I'm explaining is boy, NASA sure did do a lot of work just to fake us. You know, it, it's no, it, it makes no sense. You're you're not going to play a two hour game and then you're gonna sit there for three weeks in the <laughs> and this is two thousand four, so you're not gonna capture this in an analog device while it's all snowy and 
you're going to go frame by frame in two hours and 30 frames a second because it's a VCR interlaced. And you're going to manually draw it like they used to do with Disney cartoons, piece by piece, one by one. So you can just say, voila, <laughs> I got him. I got him now. It's, it's, it's too much. Yeah. But, and if you ever meet right. Billy, you're going to realize that, um, I mean, I don't think he can set his digital watch. I mean, when it comes to to electronic stuff, that's not his gig. That's just not his stuff. Uh, I mean, a lot of people brought up, like, you know, how in MAME you can actually edit footage uh, by using, uh, you know, you could use save states. Uh, and a lot of people right. believe that's what he used. To, to get the desired number or score that he wanted. Um, uh, could, like, could you sort of go into a little bit of these claims that, you know, people were making, you know, what your thoughts are right. on that? All right, the, the video I focused the most was on the first, uh, on the first video, which was the 1.047. Uh, video. This is the one that people call the King of Kong video because it was the one used in the movie. That right. was really the primary work I was doing. I myself saw no evidence of of there being uh, any splicing done. Now I have had people tell me, "Oh, you know, you can you can record it on a file." You can then go in there with a text editor and you can put it together and then you can replay it and then you can re-record it and then the play will look perfect so you never in the video you never see uh you never see cuts. And that is that is really um you gotta realize that that first game was in 2004. Right. I mean that is really complicated. Complicated. And when you watch the video and you go frame by frame, which I did, you you don't see you don't see any evidence of splicing. Furthermore, even the owner of of uh, Twin Galaxy um did a real long stream, it was a couple hours long, where he played a uh, a bunch of that tape and he went frame by frame and he even he was not able to pinpoint something that clearly looks like a splice and and we're talking about vcrs vcr was the editing thing it, it was magnetic tapes in 2004 where even pausing and unpausing causes screen snow where it's like, shh, and yeah, then it, it yeah, really sinks that. itself. And um, the clean, clear recordings really barely had any snow. In, in the King of Kong, you see a lot of snow, and especially when it rolls over a million. Um, some people say, oh, that tape was like that. Other people say, oh, it, it, tell me it was added for dramatic purposes. <laughs> but now we're falling into... Um, stuff that other people have told me, and it's all hearsay. Based on the video I saw and I was working with, I saw no evidence of of a clear cut um, editing of the tape. Right. So, and and also I I've, I've seen Billy play. I mean, he's not like he loses in the first round. <laughs> he, he can play. He can play. So, um, yeah, that was something, you know, once I, I dismissed that quickly because it, it was just like, it, there there just was no clue. There wasn't enough clue that it, it was happening in in the video I was working with. So, so I, I went back to the components. Right. So do you think that, you know, Twin Galaxies decided to come up with this decision based off of everyone, you know, uh, everyone's reaction, you know, all all the 
the negativity uh, that they got, all the backlash, you think that's why they could have came with their decision to just take off all his scores? I I actually don't know how to answer that one. Um, you know, I've thought about it. I've thought about it deeply. I mean, I told the owner how I felt uh, after it happened, or I thought I thought it was really harsh, and that we should have had an opportunity that if everything was going to be removed, that he should have let us um, at least try to dispute, or yeah, at least work on everything. But it all became this focus on just the Donkey Kong. And um, and he stated, well, you know, it's just we have certain rules in place, and you know, at the end, it's his place. Um, I thought it was harsh, uh, just knocking it all out and just like that in one shot. So, um, you know, even now that I'll I'll be honest, even now that I'm I'm bitter, I'm bitter right now at the situation and at um and uh, some of the Mitchells, you know, to, in reality, I, I thought it was, I thought it was excessive. I felt that, uh, the punishment was, was pretty excessive. I, I was taken back by it. I was like, Whoa, I, I, I if they would have just removed all the Donkey Kong scores, you know, I would have been like, you know, I, I don't have a problem there because we have problems with the videos. We have problems with the tapes. We, Things aren't matching, and even the third game, nobody knows where that tape is. Um, so you know, there's problems. The, there. You're, you're talking about the 1.6 million, uh, one, yeah, 1.06 million. Yes, the 1.062, uh, which was the famous what we call the the, um, the, the, the boomer, boomer score. Well, it's funny, it's got two names it's the boomer score because it was done at boomers, and then uh, we call it the Big Bang because it was it was shown to the people at a at the Big Bang event. So uh, you have the King of Kong tape one point zero four seven. You have the Mortgage Brokers tape one point zero five zero, and you have the the third one, which nobody knows where that tape is. So I cannot, I I I and a bunch of us techs never were able to see the whole uh that whole game but it was it was verified by a referee or verified yes, okay. yes that one was a referee verified game and, and and this sort of brings me into this like the way that twin galaxies uh uh verifies scores like in the early 80s uh i'm, I'm guessing you know video cameras were expensive really expensive Gosh, yeah. But I mean, I, I guess that was the only way that they could verify. You know, scores was either having a witness there, uh, uh, referees. Uh, how, do you know like how they did that? You know, like. Well, I've heard I've heard of the way the system was back then when, but it's it's not a subject that really like sat down it's like oh you know i'm gonna study this and be a pro at it <laughs> i mean there's there's a lot of good people that um volunteered a lot of great time uh, because they cared enough uh to be a part of this uh of twin galaxies that they can they can they'll tell you details and how it was and what the rules were at the time um but me that is that's way yeah way that's right uh steve said all three games including 12 minutes of the 1.062 from the uh ivg hof in 2010 show the same emulated transitions and signatures that are not arcade rendered not arcade rendered all right correct yes so um the best we were able to find with the with the boomers tape was um somebody had posted a 12 minute video of them at this event uh -huh. where where um these new uh, high scores were being introduced to the people at the big bang event and we were we were able to find um 
we were actually able to find going frame by frame that that those games also showed anomalies that that just are not produced through an arcade board. And when I mean an arcade board, I'm talking about a genuine Nintendo Donkey Kong video game board. Right. Um, and I have to be very specific about that because pe- there are people that will come and tell you, hey, but these multi-cade and these thousand and ones, they're on a PCB also. It's like, yeah, yeah, they are. But uh, it's not the authentic board that's for that cabinet. It's not by Nintendo. It's not um, the Donkey Kong PCB. And it's, it's, you have to be very, very specific. Let, let, let's go. Let's things. go into that a little bit. Uh, how exactly yeah. would you go about, you know, uh, you know, capture capturing uh, footage from a PCB, like an original arcade? Well, it depends the arcade. I mean, the more modern arcades have, well, the more modern arcades, the though the outputs are RGBs, but they're RGB. they're technically. They're technically at monitor a computer monitor sync ability, and so you're you're able to to record it way better. Um, with Billy with Billy Mitchell's setup, it was very interesting because there was no easy way to do this, and this company Two Bit, a company called Two Bit Score, created this analog converter that. All you had to do was hook up five cables. The RGB, which is the red, blue, and green. The sync cable. And the power. So seven. So you had to have the uh, 12 volts and the ground. And they would output for you a composite output. Now, if you were to look at my videos in the dispute, you can find the links. Right. Right. But if you would look at my videos, I had a TV next to the arcade going through that converter. Right. As long as you didn't hook it up through a VCR, a TV's a TV's capability of of holding more tolerance to signal um to unperfect signal is way better than a VCR. A TV resyncs itself very fast. So if it Instead of being 60 frames a second, if it's off by two frames, like 62 hertz, a TV will readjust itself every every sync. Sorry a VCR, <laughs> yeah, a VCR is not that capable because the head is spinning at the speed of the sync. And every time it syncs off, it has to retrack. I don't even know if you recall... But VCRs used to have to do oh. a thing called tracking. Yep. And the tracking was the head re-spinning. So the top of the tape is red when the scan of the TV was on top. Right. <laughs> so when it reads it, it 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 draws the picture on the TV just on time. That that's how well, I used that. to capture gameplay footage uh, back in the yeah. day. <laughs> so so with the uh so with the two bit if you hooked it up straight to a TV it was gorgeous it was a gorgeous gorgeous image right. uh, of course you have to turn the screen on its side cuz it's a vertical game but also you know based on what Billy had shared with me cuz you know it's it's not unknown that they have restaurants and it was he wanted to hook up the arcade to the screens in the restaurant, I didn't question it. I'm like, that's a great idea. That that would have been a great idea. I mean, to this day, the the family restaurant actually has two arcades in the back. The same ones you see in the King of Kong. They're still standing right. there. They're still there, running and working. But uh, but yeah, the um. The all three all three tapes uh, did have um, 
uh, indicators and anomalies that did not match, not only did not match, but could not be matched to the output that would come out of a genuine arcade game. Right. It, um, yeah, even the Donkey Kong has a, uh, the refresh rate on the board is actually not even standard. It's a 60.606. Right. So it, it really makes it hard for devices to record it and the colors to record them very well. And, and it's actually not very clear. Yeah, and a lot of people, uh, I mean, I guess a lot of people would assume that it's MAME because MAME, the way it loads up sprites and stuff, you know, and then when you look at an actual arcade, the way it loads up stuff. I mean, looking at the, I mean, compar- making comparisons like that, I mean, honestly... I, I would say you would have to just try to record from an actual arcade machine and then compare it to a main instead of using a camera. Because a camera does, I mean, like you said, the frame works differently, right, for a camera. Correct. Correct. It it, uh, it doesn't have a sync signal. Right. The camera is on its own clock, and the screen is on its own clock. And by some miracle, eventually the the camera's shutter and the screen's shutter is going to match up for a second. Right. And that second needs to be at that transitional part of the video. That's why camcorder recordings to a TV, um, when it comes down to the details, it... Um, it gets fuzzy and it's really hard right. to our eyes at regular speed. That's fine. I mean, you know, who are we lying here? Who here hasn't seen seen a pirated movie and it's some <laughs> some dude recording from a camcorder or his smartphone a movie screen and you know you see the silhouette of the people standing up. Hello, Kameha. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, Kameha said hello. <laughs> it is what it is. Oh yeah. Uh, so I guess, you know, from, from what you said, I mean, you, you said that the, the footage that you, you tried to replicate it, you know, you couldn't get it to, uh, match, you know, what the, the, the results that they actually wanted. Right. No, there was no way that the, um, after all the testing, after all the testing and seeing how the equipment works and stuff, um, remember that the game is two hours long. These tapes are two hours long, so you have to you have to select certain um, aspects that are comparable, like mass changes to the screen. If if our test was to go and and see if Mario runs the same exact speed down to the microsecond, it it would not show any differences. The emulator does emulate the code correctly. It's just the way it fakes, because it's really faking it. The way it fakes, the way the arcade would draw a screen based on what the computer screen actually, how it operates, there's a whole conversion process that's going in there. Uh, to put it in layman's terms, let me, uh, I'll explain. The <laughs> old, old, old games, all right, here's an example. The old, old, old games use what's called a vector monitor. And you can, and you know what games these are because um, it, it's very bright lines, It's all very edgy. Like the first Star Trek was was Vector. Um, I I just can't think of a game right now that was Vector. But the first first games were Vector, which meant that the screen is actually wired differently. It's a special monitor, kind of like an oscilloscope. Right. Well, you can actually download those ROMs and play it on MAME even though your computer not only is not a vector screen, it's a roster screen, or actually, 
these flat panel LCDs don't even run that way anymore. And you can play a vector game. It's just the emulator will take that formula, work some conversion to to match it to what the video generator of the computer is. Right. And that's where that's where the trick is. The old, old, old arcade boards, especially Donkey Kong, it's it's multiple boards sandwiched together. One of the boards sole job is to process the video it's huge oh, just yeah. to process the video and the way that board works it's got its own crystal and it's literally matched up with the screen and while it's reading the memory it's drawing on the screen what's on the memory right where with a computer it reads the memory in a flash and draws what's what it read on the screen practically in nanoseconds right so so you are going to have a different image that's where that's where all of a sudden the matchups uh are seen uh, believe it or not um these boards are so slow these old games where when you see that screen, dun, 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 where Donkey Kong is just standing there, yeah, and they stack up, it it's very smart what they used to do the engineers back then. At that moment, it was literally pulling programming out of the BIOS, or better yet, the um, the e prompts. That's where they were stored right. the programs and transferring the sprite data into the video card board. It, it was the old days version of loading. Right. Uh, in the first TV games, it would tell you loading, and it would play a stupid graphic. That's how slow these and, and a lot are. of people And a lot of people are probably like, what is a bio? <laughs> I yes. mean, yes. Uh, a bio is basically, it's, it, it's like when you're running an emulator or if you're running anything, you usually have to run BIOS for it in order to for it to work. That's right. how well, that's how it re it, it's basically like memory, sort of. Well, all right, in, in short, the BIOS is what's called the basic input output system. BIOS. Right. BIOS. The BIOS is really technically what tells the system how to talk to the parts. Yep. How you communicate the with brain. the brain, and it's the first, first thing that actually activates. And then the emulator then checks your video card, checks the memory it has, sees the protocol that it communicates, and sees if it's compatible to it. It then reads the old games, the old uh, programs. And its job, that's why it's called an emulator, is to take the codes that the arcade board used to use, do the mathematical conversion. Like, let's say in the arcade, uh, the command to clear the screen was like AF. But on these modern computers, it's FF. You know, we're talking hex here. (laughs) The emulator will read AF on the old game program and know, okay, we're on a PC. We're going to convert that code to something the PC understands. That's the job of the emulator. That's it. And yeah. <laughs> it and it works. It works fabulously. Fabulously. Yeah. Fabulously. I mean, it, it, it's amazing how much you can get out of it. Right. But it also... It also does a lot of tricks to make it happen but it's so fast that to the human eye to the human eye we don't notice it i mean just to produce the sound on dk it takes a a processor a a big processor and it takes a a, like five uh, memory chips and a bunch of circuitry and now with a computer i mean you got a sound chip that's smaller than your pinky nail and you have to <laughs> translate all that data 
convert it to work on that little chip and make that chip act like the problems the old one had it emulates the problems kind of like the cracking and the <laughs> and the sounds it emulates that it really creates it yeah so and it does it really well i remember a couple of years ago i was watching a a genesis emulator and i was playing a game oh it was it was golden axe and i remember golden axe had this problem that when you had like five sprites because they're very big five sprites and you were fighting at the same time the game literally would slow down the right. sprites would slow down and break up all of a sudden i'm playing this on an emulator that's on a on a very fast computer and it's breaking up it's like wow it's even faking the breaking up because it's coded that well it's coded hey you know this is the maximum capacity of this device if it surpasses that slow the clock down and it does it it does right. it that's just that's just you know handed to the programmers but at the end it's all tricks it's tricking the eyes i mean video games video games are literally devices that are producing signals to your screen that makes your brain think you're looking at something that isn't there right and you're controlling it with a joystick but you you said though uh like i believe it was last night when when you were in the the chat uh you said yep. that you've never uh, stumbled across an arcade cabinet of Donkey Kong that loaded up the same way Main did. Uh, could Correct. you could you go a little bit into that, uh, like how it loads up like on an arcade cabinet? Right. So I had um, I had watched a lot of videos of other elite players, and I also um, when I went to Banning, California. I took my video camera and I had, of course, my my mobile phone. And there you had some great elite players. I mean, this was a at this was banning California at an event called Kong off. It was a Kong off number six, I believe it was. And um, I recorded a bunch of the screens and a bunch of the other players playing. And uh, so I watched their play frame by frame. I watched a bunch of videos that I found online of other Donkey Kong players. So I was I was able to to find a pattern that the arcade cabinets all produced, no matter when it was built, when when it happened. But the only thing they all had in common was that. These were all genuine Donkey Kong arcades. Okay. They had been, they were they had been opened because one of the rules also is, you know, when you're trying to get a high score is once you get the high score without turning the camera off, you have to go to the back of the board, open the cabinet, show the board, show the serial number, and then take your joystick um, console off and flip it and show that show the joysticks just so they know that you know this is the real thing the camera got wasn't shut off it's a rule now yeah. that they asked for so these were all very authentic and um and then when i started watching uh the tapes uh closely to those certain sections this they weren't matching the tapes were matching with themselves but they weren't matching and then working on the cabinet that I was told was the cabinet that was used for one of the games and another board that was used for another game. When I tested those outputs, those outputs matched the other arcades. They matched perfectly. I'm like, okay, but they don't match the tapes. So the conclusion at the end came down that the videos that we see on the tapes could not have been produced by an authentic genuine um nintendo donkey kong board is it is it because it low it, it 
so it, is it because of the fact that you know Nintendo makes their cabinets different from other arcades, or no? It's just the it's just the way the game the game board circuit was okay. designed. Okay. So it just happens to be that that's just the way it looks. Right. But when you look at the when you start playing back your recordings of these cabinets and you start comparing them to the tapes it's it's like whoa wait a minute no this is this is not a match now everybody likes to focus on the girder because it's a very not only is a very simple part of the game to watch but it also is in the in the commercial screen uh-huh. when you're not playing the game it just loops and the looping is constantly that girder being redrawn. So it's it's a very easy piece to point, but the reality also is that it wasn't just that. It was the color matching. It was the aspect ratio. It was the border, uh, the border, the output from the recording. It was also right. the blues, uh, because the blue is such a high frequency in the composite. It's not a very clear color to see but on on the tapes you, you can kind of see that they're faded out also in two of the games the orientation is upside down um <clears throat> which is which is really just you know changing one option one option and boom your game is upside down uh, not in the arcade in the arcade you have to actually do a modification on the board to be able to make that game play upside down. Right. Or or like some people say, what if you put it in two player and on a cocktail mode? <laughs> and and I go, yeah, that'll flip it on player two. But the problem is you'll have two scores, actually three up on top. Player one, a high score and player two. And because it's designed for a cocktail table with two controllers when it goes to player two, the joystick on the stand-up unit stops working because ah. it's waiting. Yeah, because it's waiting for inputs from the other side of the cocktail table, right? Where the cabinet does not have a second joystick, so you cannot play upside down. It's it fascinating, actually. Happen. Yeah, and those are stuff that we tested. That was that was one test. I mean, a lot of people had great ideas. They're like, oh, what about this? What about that? And if it if it had sound validation, I'd I'd test it. <clears throat> now there it was interesting because one tech uh told me, oh, we gotta check the power supply, we gotta raise the voltages. And it man, you would drill that in me. We gotta do the voltages, we gotta do the voltages. And I said, Okay, fine, just we have a problem, which is when you start messing with voltages, you can burn the board out. Yeah. And and because the games become so popular um so popular with uh competitors, it's no longer a twenty five dollar board. You go on eBay and we're looking you're looking at four hundred bucks. Four hundred bucks if you're lucky. Right. So nobody wanted to donate a Donkey Kong board where I said, Fine. We're going to we're gonna mess with the voltages and it might come back busted. Nobody wanted to do that. But I justified skipping it because the reality is that changing the voltages would not cause a two hour game to just simply change the way it it operates continuously. When you start messing with voltages um, you start getting erratic uh, pop-ups. Um, um, you know, the character starts disappearing. Uh, the the sprites start acting odd, uh, and eventually, right. eventually, what happens? I'm going to get a little technical here. Is all these devices are digital? What that means, it's just on or off, and it just communicates literally like ones and zeros. This is how it all works. But the way the chip in that board works, it's if it's receiving five volts, it interprets that data as a one, as an on. 
if it's receiving zero volts, it's interpreting it as a zero. Now, you have to pass a certain threshold, like a like a 2.1 volt pass for the chip to understand, oh, okay, we're above this, this threshold, so that means that this is a one. If you start screwing with the voltages, where you start under volt, putting less voltage, all of a sudden, when the chip starts sending one signals and it doesn't pass that threshold, it's interpreted as a zero. So hmm. it can be it can be down as simple as a okay, your joystick up has a switch. When the switch is on, it's a one. But because the voltage is low, pushing your joystick up, only it doesn't pass the threshold, so it takes it as you're not doing anything. Right. But you don't have the oomph, the the oomph, the power to power all these memory chips are in this huge board at the same time, and you get voltage drops, and that's when it just gets chaotic. Right. But when you watch these gameplays, they're not chaotic. They are a good two-hour gameplay. Two great hours of the game not failing on you. So, like I told one tech, it's not like the board says, oh, we're at four volts today. So we're going to just, our transitions are going to look like that device. But if you give me five volts, I'll look like this device. (laughs) It it doesn't make that kind of decision. Right. The technology is amazing, but it's not smart. It just... (laughs) It's not smart. So um, so I skipped that test totally. I'm like, it's just, there isn't enough. Uh, I'm not comfortable with wasting so much more time on something that's just too minute. Yeah. It, it's too amazing for it to actually be something. Right. So I was going to ask you about that that video of them changing the board. You 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 know the one that uh that everyone seems to be talking about where you know he's playing Donkey yeah. Kong Jr. and like you see them swapping out the board yet it looks like the same exact board as correct, the correct. you know which I know Donkey Kong Jr has a different board. Like it has the yellow uh uh, little things on there, and the the DK uh, cabinet has a white. It's, yeah, it's like... got it's got different markings. It has right. it does have different markings. Yes. That's, uh, do you do that's... you think that in some well, I guess in your opinion, do you think that uh, maybe that could have been you know some way they could have tampered with that or you know. Well, no, the boards were real. Those okay. were that—that that was a real board, right? Yeah, that—that. That, but that uh, I can, but, I can but a lot of people are questioning his Donkey Kong Junior scores, and you know whether it's a main board because I mean, if if it was running on main, it would be a computer. It'd be a computer or a laptop. Especially or, in that time. Yeah, because now, I don't think they make main type of cabinets. Like, you no. know, the same way an arcade cabinet's made. No, what they do have is like a system called like a mart, um, multi-cade. You have a 16-in-1 is very popular. A 60-in-1. Um, and some even with 2,000 games in one. Yes, it is an emulated system. But I tested a 16-in-1, a 16-in-1, and also a modified uh, Donkey Kong Jr. called what they call, and it's in the scoreboard, it's called a um, a Donkey Kong Double. Donkey and what Kong, the Donkey Kong Double. Yeah, the, yeah, the Donkey Kong Double is actually pretty neat. <laughs> you take a Donkey Kong Jr. board and you add these daughter boards boards on where the e-proms go with the donkey kong game and you can literally play donkey kong jr or if you hit i believe it you have to hit player one and player two at the same time 
And if you hit that, it changes to Donkey Kong. Yeah. It um, you can have those two games because they use the same board. Right. But somebody created a a card that lets you with hitting the two buttons, it switches programs. Now, because that is considered a modified board, um, it's based on the rules. You couldn't play that. But if you did, it actually has its own score under what they call a Donkey Kong double. So whenever you see Donkey Kong double, it's, oh, it's a modified Donkey Kong Jr. that has both Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. But, but, oh. <laughs> but the way those, but the way those multi trans Sorry transition and even the Donkey Kong double did not match and does not match um, the tapes, uh, the tapes that, um, of the gameplay. But so I did test that. I, I did make a, a test on it. But but what do you think and, though of that though the the board swapping video when when people were trying uh, I, I guess people were making the conclusion that you know he may have uh, tampered with you know that to to you know like to make it into some sort of modded board or something along those lines. Right. Um. I did hear that. I did hear one. Or read one person who had said that, but I mean, Apollo Legend. Dispute, well, the dispute forum was huge. Uh, no, what Apollo Legend showed was how in the video where they were pulling when when uh, Billy was doing the the world record for Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Junior, how when he pulled the board and put the next board in, it was actually the same board. That was put in. Uh, the justification to that was that the Donkey Kong was already removed and put in the car, and um, and Mr. Childs wanted a video for his YouTube and asked, "Hey, can you record me just doing the swap so I can have it on my YouTube channel?" That was that was the story that right. was presented. Now. The truth is, I have a lot of opinions about that incident and that situation, but because it doesn't have to do with the work I was doing, right? I, you can't. I, I really, I, I stay away from it. Right. Um, I really can't say too, too, too much, uh, because at the end, it's, you know, it's it's my opinion of of just from hearsay and. And from process of elimination, and at the end, I could be wrong about it. Right. So I, I yeah, I, I can't. Not that I can't. I, I just no, I can't. I just there isn't much I can say. But about that situation, I didn't right. know these people. I didn't know who they were. I, I wasn't even around when that happened. Right. So it's it's a pickle. Which which a lot of people are trying to. Uh... You know, I, I guess a lot of people are trying to say that, you know, maybe he could have used modded boards or, you know, uh, but I mean, since you can't really say much on that, uh, I guess, I guess the next thing I would like to bring up is, uh, the whole Pac-Man thing. Uh, you, you were actually, uh, defending Billy on that, uh, you know, saying that his scores in the perfect Pac-Man was legit. Uh, could, could you, uh, you know, sort of get into that? Well, I can get a little into it. Um, truth is I never tested, worked, or even investigated anything of it. Right. Um, the little... The little controversy I knew about it at the time was that when when Billy did that score, he had agreed with a couple of other players to to at the same time play that game at a certain date, and he didn't follow through with it. He did it earlier to be the first. Now, um, you know, 
that also comes down to, you know, I wasn't there for that. I don't know. But at the end, when it comes to the gameplay, I I had never heard anyone else say anything different than Billy Mitchell. Yeah, Billy Mitchell did that game in, 19, in July 3rd, I think it was. July 3rd of 1999. And this was... This was well documented. It was well known. It was there was never a, a real big dispute about it. Um, I mean, he had been on documentaries about it. He had been on uh, on little online specials that they did about it. Um, he was on Guinness for a while, for a long while, about it. And it wasn't it wasn't something anybody ever spoke about. Nobody ever claims that uh, that that was maimed or emulated at all. The the little controversy I ever did hear about, and this was after I started meeting other people, was simply how he came about that day of doing that game. Um, you know, but I I tell some people that's like you know that's like when you're in in middle school and your friend asks your girl out for prom first and you're like hey man and it's like hey look, i got there first i mean sorry yeah what do you want me to do? <laughs> sorry you, but you know so a lot of people but, yeah but that's something it, it wasn't something i investigated it wasn't right. something i ever checked on i never looked at i I was just I was just very surprised when they killed all his scores that they even included the the Pac-Man score. Where I'm like I'm like, man, that was that was like the the royal the royal growl. I mean the I mean the, that's the king historical. Of the king of, I mean it's it, it, historical. It right, and he, he went to Japan and yeah, he you know, the Namco. Uh, a special was done for it. Uh, you know, a, a lot of events came about from that, and it was just one of those things where it was like out of mind, out of sight. Like, oh yeah, he, oh he also did. Uh, he's a Pac-Man guy. Oh wow! And not only that, I've seen him play Pac-Man. He plays really well. He plays well. Yeah. <laughs> and and just recently, he redid it. I mean, he redid it. He did it twice. Well, he did it twice once because he missed one pellet. One. So he went back and did it again. And he did it. I mean, one pellet out of 3,330,000. I mean, could you imagine, though, playing that game every single day, though, just to get good at it? Like, that would... that That's mind-boggling. I mean, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of patience, too, to get good at something. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he had to have played it every single day. Oh, he, well, he's got a cabinet in his house. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm just saying, like, back then, you know, if it, it like... No, these, <laughs> the, these guys in, in the arcade circle, including uh, Steve Kleizak that wrote us here and, and, um, and others... These are re- they are really good players. I mean, I remember when I went to Banning. There's there's one guy. I'll tell you his name because <laughs> it's not really part of the investigation. It's in a positive light. Uh, his name is Robbie Lakeman. Robbie he Lakeman. Was, yeah, he was the Donkey Kong champ for a while. And he and this guy, um, while I was at Banning, he literally would put on you put on headphones earbuds sit down at a donkey kong game and he'd pass a million of course he would just sit there and focus for like an hour and a half to two hours and it's like my gosh that guy that guy hit a million and then like three hours later he gets back he puts his earbuds he sits back down boom he hits a million again and a million in donkey kong is not easy Mm-mm. It's not easy. It takes hours. Well, maybe an hour and a half to two. And and the game is a funny game. It, I mean, the, the biggest caveat of the game is that you have no choice. By the time you reach, like, level 22, you die. It, it's It's got this thing called the kill screen. You're dead. 
No <laughs> choice. No matter how many lives you have, Mario just he's gone. He's yeah. dead. So you have a set time to get all this score. You you gotta do all these techniques to jump over the same barrels multiple times on multiple levels and it's kind of like is- it's kind of like with Pac-Man, where the the screen, like once you hit a certain score or once you reach a level, the half of the screen like has all those numbers oh. and stuff. Yeah, that's the kill screen. That's a level two hundred and fifty-five. <laughs> but um, yeah, but like with Donkey Kong, I mean, with Pac-Man, you know, every pellet counts for a certain score. You can't double pellet. Or in Donkey no. Kong, some of these players though jump over the barrel. Then they'll do a backwards jump and get a score. Then while the barrel's falling down to the next girder, they'll go down the ladder and re-jump the same one that. and then backwards jump. And then and then just repeat and repeat and repeat and they're just maximizing their score. Oh get yeah. This, yeah, I score. I mean, these players really it, it, it's a spectacle you watch I'm, it, I'm like, surprised oh. though it hasn't developed like a retina in their brain <laughs> I mean, they, they get really good they're very competitive people but i mean they get really good at a certain game and you're like you're like wow i mean it it's actually impressive when you see it in person right. to a point where you're like wow i never thought i'd actually um feel this way about it Um, Uh, i guess like i guess the best example i can give is like i'm not a sports fan i really don't follow sports right but man when i'm watching the super bowl and there's a great play going and i don't even know what team it is i'm like that's amazing i get really in right but this this kid uh he's not a kid but uh lakeman just watching that put on the earbuds and it's like wow bam it's like that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Uh, Teddy, and, uh, I was gonna. I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but uh, uh, Teddy Edwards says, "Is it true that Steve never was the first player to beat the 1982 re- record as deceptively depicted in the so-called uh, King of Kong's documentary, and that Billy was not the official record holder when Steve came in?" Um. <clears throat> If I recall, I think I, Billy was uh, had nine hundred and ninety something thousand, right? Yeah, in the movie, in the movie, if, if I remember right, the long-standing score was eight hundred seventy-four thousand three hundred, I believe it was. Right, and and uh, Steve was able to pass it. Uh, I think with a million and six. But there was just something that disqualified it, so it dropped it back. Um, in in the real world, there actually was another player who had already who had already beat um, that Billy Mitchell score uh, by the name of Tim Servi. And yeah, Tim uh, Servi. Servi. Yeah, and he, he had already he had already beaten that score. Um, that Billy Mitchell had held for a very, very long time. But when it came down to making the movie, they they just never really even spoke about him. I and wonder then, why that is. Well, if you ask my opinion about it, and it's... The uh, truth is just, Billy Mitchell just... He, he, he really can play a good bad guy. I mean, he's tall... Yeah, he dresses, talks. He's got a mullet, and he and uh, and, and he, he looks tall. <laughs> oh no, he's tall. He's tall. Yeah, I mean he's tall. He's commanding. He knows he knows how to work a crowd. He knows how to speak to them. I mean it's, you know, it's almost like uh, it for dramatics. I believe it was a much. It 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 just looks better, but. Um, but the problem also came down that the documentary was acted like if it was all 100% real. But the reality is there was a lot of things about it that just isn't so. And now, you know, I'll confess to that after meeting people that were part of it and in it. So and, most uh, of it was all for dramatic. 
uh, a lot of it, a lot of it was, a lot okay. of it was. And, uh, but if you were to ask me point by point, I wasn't around for it. <laughs> I really don't know the, the massive details of it. I just, William Rosa uh, I, said, no, Teddy, uh, no, Teddy, Tim Zerby was, but that movie cheated him worse than the LA cops cheated OJ Simpson. <laughs> Well, actually, OJ oh, that's bad. With it, Come so on. I, think, <laughs> I think OJ cheated the cops. Yeah, I think o, yeah, I think OJ might have cheated the cops there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, but I recall uh, Tim Serby. Uh, recently, I tried contacting him, but because he used to write to me a lot on Twitter, because he's he's really bothered by it to this day. He's really bothered by it, and all of a sudden, I just couldn't find him. Like he's 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 gone from the system. I, I don't know where he went, but uh, Tim Servey claims, based on what he told me, that the first time he found out that he was not even part of this movie was he went to the premiere. He went to a special screening premiere because he was a high score player, and when he's looking at the screen, he's like, "Wait a minute, where am I?" <laughs> Wait a second. He, I'm not. He's not number one. He's not number two. And even when they're putting in the scores, I mean, you don't even see Tim on the top three. And he's he, and he said he lost it. He got really angry. Oh. He that he states that's when he discovered it. Literally watching the film, he's like, "Uh, wait a second. I, I was the top guy." And um. And he's been he's been very bitter. He's been very bitter since that. Uh, the so very... the so called Ko uh, King of Kong documentary uh, clearly depicts the 1982 arcade score as the score Steve was trying to beat. How much money did yeah. they make? It came and it's, he says it came down to money. Um, well, you well, know, I've heard the money talk before, but come on. Let's let's be serious, okay? Nobody, none of us. Tim is six say, foot one. <laughs> yeah, no, none of us ever say, you know, I really want to open a business to lose money, or I'm gonna do that job because I wanna, I wanna come out with less than what I have. Of course, everything has a money incentive. So, yeah. I mean that, you know, that argument it was was certain aspects of it unfair. I. I'd probably agree, um, you know. But at the end, shoot, I, I've heard stories where people get recasted because they lost, they gained five extra pounds. Like, oh, <laughs> okay, you're, you're, you're too fat, dude. We're gonna put Tom Hanks in your place. Like, wait, but I'm not dead yet. Mm -hmm. But it's it it is what it is, you know. But I'm not gonna lie to you, Billy. The experience I've had with Billy hanging out with him and stuff, when I would hang out with him, he was not, he's not what he he's depicted on there. Okay. On there. Yeah. Yeah, and he says, uh, no one asked Tim, Tim is six foot one. And I was like, gosh, you, you guys bringing up height. It's like, it, it makes me envious when people talk about that, you know, the height thing, because I'm like five foot nine. Well... I mean, look, it was dude, short. <laughs> let me tell you something. When when you go to one of these Kong offs or one of these uh, th these events with Billy there, and he's and he walks in, I mean, he's a character character chair, Seriously, I mean, he it's a super tall guy in a tuxedo with an American flag a tie with a with a really 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 well done <laughs> mullet. Okay. He works really hard on it, and he's just walking in. It's like, it, it's like, holy shit! It's a it, it's a comic book character, literally that you're watching. You're like, oh my gosh, wait a minute, that's that's that guy. You know, he he is he is playing the part. I mean, Walter Day, you you rarely ever see him. At an event where he doesn't have the referee look, right? I mean, I mean, it's it's their, it's a shtick. It's the marketing. It's it, it's the identity that they've created in this circle. Uh, so, uh 
So, uh, you know. the, the chat is, it, it's starting, <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, so Billy has no problem infringing on players' right to title for money. Uh, William, uh, William Rosa says, I heard this because Tim is kind of ugly and they only wanted good looking guys. <laughs> Uh, Steve, your, your your friend Steve said Teddy is Tim. Hi, Tim. Well, <laughs> Tim could actually oh, play unlike wait, Billy. Wait, Teddy is Tim? Yeah, I guess. Well, wait, so why is he talking as a third person? I don't know. Tim, I tried writing to you on um, on Twitter the other day, and it said that you were, your account was dead. It was gone. Oh, well. Um uh, but you have look at that man you you're getting the you're getting the big boys here writing on your chat i mean yeah william rosa here <laughs> he's watched that he's got a lot of info way more than me the truth is i'm i'm the new guy i'm right. literally the new guy who just got involved in this thing really just by accident i honestly thought it was going to be a two or three day you know test and and right. now we're here now we're here yeah uh, Tim, I guess Tim says, uh, yeah, there was a lot of money involved with the exploitation of that topic matter. Billy could not even play and <laughs> had to cheat. Uh, William is saying, come on, guys, you didn't know this was Tim. Steve ruined the fun. I was going to make fun of Tim until Teddy finally couldn't take it and admitted it. Billy is scared to play Tim in the head to head for money, so is Steve. <laughs> So I, I guess that's Tim. <laughs> well, and in, in I don't know about uh I don't know Fired about anyone else, but I, I've actually <laughs> seen Steve. He, he he's getting up there in his Kong play because he he's also he, he's a he's a uh, Guinness World Book uh, holder for Mario Brothers and Turbo Miss Pac. -Man. Wait the ori wait the original Mario Brothers the arcade or uh, yeah that's the man right there. Holy crap. Anything has to do with Mario. I mean, he's marathon that game. Yeah, Billy, yeah, I, uh, yeah. he said, I miss you streaming, Tim. Uh, fire it up again, man. <laughs> Billy is all show. Yeah, these are, these are, look, these are the, uh, you have there in your chat, you have, uh, these are high score players right here. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's not joking. What what what, what was it's... what was uh, your score though, Tim? And uh, I mean, not Tim, uh, Steve and Mario Brothers. That, that's something I'm curious to know. Oh, he's in the millions, I think. Gosh. He, I... He'll he'll type it in, he'll type it in in a second. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't expect to to get these guys on here. <laughs> uh, I guess it's because of you. Yeah, isn't that sweet? Yeah. <laughs> no, there. Uh, I've uh, the many of these people I've I've met them in person, and and the reality is it's it's a good circle. It's just this whole this whole situation is really it's really sad. I mean, it's 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 unfair to many. It's 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 not right. It's uh, you know, for for a while, right after right after my five point four million, out, what? That is freaking yeah. insane. <laughs> and that, I mean, he he had the machine when I first met him. He had a machine in his house. It was it was pretty wild. It was uh, pretty wild. Billy now. is an actor, so is Steve. They are not real players. Tim will be more than happy to play for money. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that yeah, he's always said that he'll do it for money. But these are great players. I mean, they're no joke. They're no joke. But um, I remember after I did my findings, you know, I really felt oh, Steve bad. Weeby. Uh, that that's who he's talking about, Steve Weeby, not me, by the way. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. so I, I wanted to talk to you about that. Uh, the King of Kong. Uh, you showed me the DVD cover. Actually, you said he's not on there. Billy's not oh, on there. Oh, yeah, this is. Yes, hey Steve, I know I have I I still have it. Steve is who lent it to me because he was actually the, he was he was the guy who was really helping me, um, you know, find a, a lot of these players, find parts. I mean, we literally had to go around finding a TV. We couldn't find a CRT, uh, a, a tube TV. 
I had to go on offer up to find blank VHSs. Not even Walmart carries VHS tapes no more. And Steve was one of the ones helping me. He's like, look, Steve, see, I haven't damaged it. Just so you know, I've I've taken care of it. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, what, what I tell some people where it's funny, where in The King of Kong, it's about Billy Mitchell's, uh, you know, playing Donkey Kong. But throughout the whole movie, you never see him play a game. You never physically see him play a game. And on the cover, you don't even see Billy on the cover. I mean, it's... You barely see him there. Yeah, it's the movie that made him re-famous. <laughs> and, and it's like a sleight of hand. Like, did you really see him play anything? <laughs> like, actually, no. And after an hour and 45, you're like, man, yeah, that was a, that was a fun watch. It, um... Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty strange. Uh, dude, I challenged that score. He's talking about Dragon's Lair, uh, the the arcade version. Uh, Rosa, I believe Tim set a Dragon's Lair score and proved you wrong on the game. Dude, I challenged that score. We both admit it's wrong. You doofus, you proved me right. This is why Steve is more likable than you. Steve and Billy are actors in a fictional film. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish that they would put Steve W or Steve K, so I know. Yeah. They're they're not talking about Steve K. Uh, oh, okay, okay. He's talking about Steve W. Uh, but what, how much do you know about you know the process that they went through that movie, like you know recording and everything, and you know posting I myself, the scores. I myself know zero. Okay, zero. Uh, <laughs> I came in. I came into this thing a year and a half ago. And literally, really, I met Billy Mitchell like two days after I volunteered to do this. And by then, when I looked at the dispute, the dispute was right now it's at about 370 pages. But when I came in, it was at around almost about 110 pages. And I'm like, eh, you think my writing's bad? I am not going to read 110 pages. Yeah. So Steve was my help on that too, where he'll give me the highlights. Like he'll go through it real quick. And a lot of it is really people's opinions or silly <laughs> ideas or, or their theories. But occasionally every couple of pages, you you have some slang dunks like, Hey, look at this and look at this. If you put it together and you put a timeline together, it, it just doesn't jive. And you're like, wow, that, that makes sense. But you know, All right. We, it's all there. It's not erased and you leave it there. But, um, you know, when it comes to the movies, cause these guys have been in multiple documentaries, just King of Kong is one of the famous ones. Yeah. But, the King of Kong. Yeah. But Billy has been like in uh, chasing ghosts, chasing he, ghosts, even though, even though his little parts was like chasing ghosts. Uh, you had man versus snake. He had a little part in that. Um, um, uh, King of Arcade, he had a part, a little part in that. I mean, I mean, it's, it's an interesting circle, but, um, but it's all really about the classic arcade games, but at the end, it's, it's more like just their love for the game, but not the inside stuff. I, I would but love to I interview know. Tim. I would, if, if he ever decides to come on here, I'd love to interview him. He sounds like the type of guy I'd like to talk to. <laughs> oh yeah, Tim. Tim probably, if I had to guess, has plenty to say. Um, I can only say much about the tech stuff, and um, see, like the movie stuff, I know nothing about other than I watch it and I heard what people told me about it. But that again, it falls under hearsay and. I'm not really that dedicated. But you like, you got to oh, admit, stuff. though, I mean, if, if it was directed the way it was, I mean, you know, and this is from what I've heard. I've heard that the the movie itself, it was directed a certain way to make it dramatic and, you know, uh, Correct. Yes. but to also make it feel real, too. Well, it's done like a documentary. Right. It's done as a documentary, and, and truth is, it really nobody, I mean, what I noticed was nobody that was part of it ever really claimed <laughs> differently until 
all this dispute stuff started happening, and then all of a sudden the focus was like, well, that's a movie, man. You can't really focus everything on the movie. And it's like, all right, all right. But, um, yeah, I never really focused too much on that because it really didn't, it, it wasn't, it wasn't adding value to the work I was doing. It was really more of a distraction. I did take the time to watch it. That's why I have it. And all the other documentaries. And so I did, um, it was kind of cool to meet these people. After I watched it, I'm like, oh my gosh, look, there's Walter Day and Richie Knuckles and Joe West, who has no longer with us no more. He's passed on. But I had I had a great time with these guys. Triforce, um, you know, it. You one thing is what you see out there, and even these players, what you see when they're out and about, but you don't see the what goes on in the background. You know, where right. they're very competitive people, but they they speak to each other. It's like a big dysfunctional family, <laughs> and these events were like the family reunions. But unfortunately, all all that's going on right now, you know, it's really it's really dampering the the sub community. My opinion is it's it. I wish it wasn't happening. It's a darn shame, and I don't think it should. It, it just shouldn't. It shouldn't be there. It, it, we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be in that place. I mean, I've spoken to elite players who literally hate the hate being part of this thing because it the fun has been sucked out of them has been sucked out of them. and it's it's unfortunate because watching yeah. these people play is actually it's actually it's not like watching kids really good at Fortnite. no these are yeah they're, they're pushing the, the, the they, these these are like the original esports right but they, these guys are pushing the system Till it crashes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they crashed Pac-Man. They crashed Donkey Kong. I mean, they, they crash it. Some of these games, I mean, like, um, even the Mario game, I mean, this is hours of play. I mean, you got Missile oh, Command, yeah. I think. I, mean, I, I think in Missile Command, the record holder literally did almost three straight days of gameplay. Three days! Three days. To get that <laughs> score, and people that have tried to beat it, they literally like by day one and a half, they're they're hallucinating and hallucinating. They can't play anymore. Right. Yeah. This is yeah. These it, it, when watching that, it's crazy. It, it, oh yeah. As you can tell, I'm I I am I I am oh shocked by it. Like holy crap, these guys are real. The the thing to me though. The, that makes this fascinating is mostly you know you know people just pointing out the you know the the technical aspects of it you know and you know trying to see you know what fits and what does it's kind of like a it, it's kind of it reminds me of one of those mystery movies where you're trying to you know you're trying to figure out all I mean you, you use all the clues and everything to, to try yeah, to clue <laughs> yeah. it, it's like it feels like one of those where you know you're you're trying to paint this person as the bad guy and you're using evidence this and that and that and you know maybe this or that uh, but I mean I, I just find it all fascinating. Well, we're also talking about um, when it comes to the tech aspect, let's be honest. Let's be truthful here. It's really damn boring. It's yeah. It's really boring. And and I mean, I, I bet there's people that have been listening to me that, like, having killed themselves because they don't have a stool and enough rope. They're <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, you know, talking about the transitions, the memory, the way it operates, the schematics. I mean, they're literally like, I will not be surprised if I get an email tomorrow that says, hey, if you reply to this, I'm going to be so sad because that means you're still alive. You know, some <laughs> some really mean thing because it is boring. But yeah, you, you try to find you try to find a way to explain it. 
in a way that's not boring, but at the end, it's tech stuff. It's yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't make it fun, but you want you want the truth to be known. But you always hear everybody always wants the truth, but in reality, I mean, if it if it's not delivered right, they just don't understand it. That's why I opted to to do videos a lot more than doing type ups. Right. In in hopes that look, this is why a lot of this is why people keep stating this. And you you point it out and it's like, oh, oh, I, I get it. I get it now. Right. And and it's usually not always crystal clear. Uh I mean, maybe what we see might be different from what it actually is oh correct correct um like an example is like even the old tvs i mean i tell people oh you know your tv is actually just a little stupid dot that's moving back and forth really darn fast and by the time i finish that stupid sentence right there their eyes are already rolled back (laughs) not only because they don't know that they don't know yeah but the only thing they do know is how much they don't care to know but it's important if you're trying to explain right. why something works a certain way. I promise you, if you listen to enough of it, enough explanations, all of a sudden it clicks. Or it's like, oh, wait a minute. It's, it's running a refresh. Oh, because that dot. Oh, oh wait a minute. And, and it's like, right. there it is. There's the answer. You you just gotta but, you just gotta have you know that mindset that you know okay I'll, I'll I'll take that into account. Yeah, you gotta you you have to deliver it. You have to deliver it right and fast. Right. And I am I am really slow. <laughs> I mean, I did, a, I did a confession video that by the time I was done, I'm like forty eight minutes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but. Like right now, it's it's really I'm thinking, I'm thinking while my mouth is spewing while trying to be careful because I want to be as honest as possible. Right. And uh, I mean, I mean, continue. Uh, what other question? What other question you got? Uh, <laughs> Orange Supreme nine eight nine says little kids could kill Screen Pac Man in eighty <laughs> two. Uh, maybe. I bet. Um, you know, I've had a lot of back and forth talks with people about when they come to me and they say, oh, but who really did the first Pac-Man? And I go, well, it's not about who did it first. It's who did it first in a competitive setting. It's like when you see these Olympic runners do right. these amazing scores, I can guarantee you that that wasn't the run that gave them that amazing score. They have probably, in their practice, done that run 200 times, and that 200 times, maybe 10 of those times, they've hit record numbers. But that was their practice time. And when it's now competing time, that's when it counts. Yeah. There's a camera there, when you're in a sanctioned place, when, you know, when it's, that's the setting. Right, because because then what happens is you start opening, you you start setting a precedence, where anybody can say, "Hey, believe it or not, the other day, uh, I hit three million. I was just having a great day." It's like when I think it was a Wednesday while I was doing laundry. It's like no, no, it, yeah, I mean, it's got to be a set date. It's it's got to be looked at. It's got to be right. checked. And 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 there's no and there's no proof of it, or right, documented. Right. Uh, but I mean, and, and that's sort of common. That's where common sense sort of plays in. Like, I mean, you could be the first person to make Oof. a friggin' uh, pineapple pizza, yet you know, oh, if yeah. it was a pineapple making pizza contest, that's when it would count. You know, or that's something. That's that's exactly or a pizza right. making contest. But that's like that weird. that's just you know, I, I like using food analogies. Gosh. But uh Yeah, I'm uh, not a fan of food. <laughs> Are you laughing in my face? 
Look at that. Can you believe that? But, uh, but, uh, I was gonna say, though, like, and, and, and if you, if you looked at this, you know, like, I know you said that to me earlier that, you know, this, this, you know, you're, you're part of the lawsuit. Uh, I, I am implicated. Uh, you you are no implicated. Yeah. So, like, are you not allowed to speak about certain things or, you know? Well, I'm implicated because I was the tech. Right. There's, like, my attorney told me after I did that dumb one, you know, I signed that paper, knowing I shouldn't have. My attorney, you know, he gave me a look. I'm not going to tell you all the things he said because I've right. known him for a very long time. So he's very free to say things that millennials today would cry about. <laughs> but he, uh, <laughs> he, he literally said, there is absolutely nothing any paper could have said that would have gotten you out of this case. Only right. one thing would have got you out of this case. And that is if that paper said, Carlos Pinheiro cannot be part of this case because he's dead and you're not dead. So, I mean, the whole idea that, oh, if you sign this, he'll keep you out of the case is just not plausible if no. it were to reach the court. Now, because I'm implicated, uh, I mean, if it does reach court, um, I can be asked, to go over by the state and I'd have no choice. I would have to, or I'd be in contact. And, and you, and you would have to go through the technical aspects. <laughs> I would have to answer whatever Could you question. Imagine the judge yeah. sitting there listening to the technical stuff. <laughs> oh man. I was about to say something, but we got watchers. I don't want to get in trouble, uh, but I'm sorry. It, uh, it, because of the implication I have to be I have to be very careful to whatever I state has to be in the matter of fact. Right. Uh, and that's why you constantly hear me keep using the word well my opinion on it is blah 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 and if it's real real heavy opinion I I skip on it. Right. I'll, I'll, like right, it's right. That's something I was testing. And this is really, really important. Well, I, I was, I was telling you, I was just asking you in general, like if you've talked to anybody else about this besides me. Huh. I don't think I've have not spoken to anybody ever since that document, the uh, sign thing. After that happened, I, I was so bitter. I'm still bitter, but I was so bitter. I'm like, wait a minute, I've been quiet for like a year hoping that things will get better and this fire is now a forest fire. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'll answer whatever you want. But the thing that protects me is that I do my best. You know, I might have slipped once or twice not knowing, but I know that I do my best to to stick to the purview of what I tested. And I'm right. immense, immensely confident of at least the portion that I tested that right. my findings are are accurate. And I don't mean right. by 90%, I'm talking 100%. That's right. how confident I am in those findings. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are in the chat now. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, it's a lawsuit. That's a good joke. <laughs> lawsuit. That's a good joke. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Here it comes. My opinion is based on you know all the paperwork and stuff that I just don't see it getting there. I just don't see a judge saying, "Hey, this is interesting. You're gonna take it just as is." Um, yeah. The reality is that that evidence package that was released and the modified one that's not the that's not the full paper that I saw what I saw was over 210 pages the evidence package is only like a was only like 150 plus pages right I don't know what the missing stuff is I don't know 
it might be helpful, it might not, but my opinion is I just don't see it getting there. Getting to yeah. getting to the lawsuit portion. Yeah, be and, and, and keep in mind lawsuits they, they cost a lot of money. Oh yeah, yeah. And 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 I mean like it's it and it's a very it's a very rough uh process. It, it's time grueling. Uh it, it could take years for this to even get to court maybe. Or maybe it might go fast depending like it, it's it's all about time, timing and, you know, the evidence. I don't know. I have maybe. No. <laughs> well, I mean that that's that's what Nick Ricada always says. <laughs> It is uh, one of those things like like I don't mind going to California, but I don't want to go to California because California of knows how to party. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna be a party. Uh, Joseph says I don't think Billy cheated, so I'm in that camp. Well, that's I mean, fine. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's that's your fine. opinion. Uh, that's- just like it's you like, know, okay. I have a different opinion as well. Uh, but I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and bash anybody who believes he's innocent. I mean, I'm, that's what this whole entire stream is about. It's discussing it, you know. Uh, <laughs> Steve says the evidence is clear. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. He, whoever that, whoever that gentleman is, yeah, he's. Uh... Oh, Team Billy for life. Team Billy for life. Are they going to make a shoe with that on the side? <laughs> well, you uh... know, it, it, it's funny because <laughs> I know this sounds terrible, but literally after all this was done, when I went to my lawyer and, and Billy left and stuff, my lawyer literally looked at me and started laughing. I'm like, what's your what's your deal? He goes, all this over video games? I go, I go, you don't get it. They're real serious about it. He goes, what's like the hair? I'm like, I'm like, they're serious about it. They're serious. Yeah, and he's crying serious business. <laughs> and I told him, I told my lawyer, I'm like, just look up that name. Look up that name. I mean, you can look it up even on YouTube. It's got tons of pages, tons of pages. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like. Yeah, he's he is he you know he's a marker in in the subculture. Right. Uh Teddy said uh or Tim said define cheating. <laughs> oh, that's not that's not asking me. Yeah, uh, ask me. uh Google it. <laughs> Just Google well, it. Do you have any other Well, you have any other technical question cuz I mean I'm rambling here. Oh that, yeah. That, uh that's pretty- um, but whatever his name was, he's right. I am rambling. We gotta um, get to the here, here's the thing about that. Uh, I, I need to bring this up because Joseph said, I hope Billy sues and silences all dissenting voices. Uh, here's the thing. And, you know, it's free speech. Uh, you know, people can say whatever they want. Uh, I would never try to silence anybody. Uh I mean, I'm a free speech advocate, you know, that, that's who I am, you know, but, uh, I mean, if it turns out to be true or, f- you know, wrong, you know, I, I always admit, you know, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong, you know, about somebody. Not me. I'm a man. <laughs> You're a man. <laughs> oh, man. If she's, if I'm wrong, I just send her and make a sandwich. Make a sandwich. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't repeat that. Don't repeat that. Uh, Nobody- I, I guess that. I guess I do have another technical question. So, uh, we we were talking about you know how you know about inputs and stuff like the bios and stuff. Uh, like, do you maybe well, this is this is possible? Maybe. Do you think well, that the biases? But yeah, go ahead. Do you think if this is possible? Like maybe the arcade cabinet that Billy was playing on was maybe tampered with someone tampered with the bios somehow, and maybe that's why it loads up like Mame or 
I mean, so you, you, the the prompts, the D um, prompts, the yeah. prompt, prompts, key um, prompts. Uh, no, not not based on the testings I did. Right. Well, no. I mean, that was just you know something I I thought of. Maybe that you know could explain everything, but since you confirmed, no, yeah. No, because also remember that I was I was told um, when I was starting my testing that that was the board, that was the cabinet, this was the converter, that was the capture board, this was, right. uh, this was the setup. I mean, even to the point where that cabinet got sold and the person that they sold it to um, lend it to us just so it was the authentic board. Not only that, I also had the board that was from the mortgage brokers event, the 1.050, which he had sent to Nintendo twice for verification. And the box and the label was there. And then it had the Nintendo address and it was packaged. And I tested that board also. Those boards show no sign of tampering. They show right. no sign of uh, modification and I even I personally did one modification to test the theory where um, there's a way of making the screen image upside down from the board by changing two jumpers and I changed the jumpers I tested it I did my magic of recording it and then at home doing it step by step and no, it didn't. It didn't have a. Uh, it didn't have the transition that we see on the tapes. So that was null and void. It's like, all right, so that's out the window. Uh, there was a moment in time where I had just learned about the double Donkey Kong, and I go, wait a minute, what if, what if that's what he used, the double Donkey Kong? It's an actual board. It looks like the actual board, but. You know what if that's what they used? So I asked Mr. Child, "Hey, do you have a do you have that Donkey Kong double? Because I know he had one." And he goes, "Yeah." And he let me use it, and I tested that board also. And it doesn't produce the output that we see in the tapes. And you would think that it would because it it's it's the same game, right? Well, well, it was a theory I had where I'm like, wait a second, what if? And this is before, you know, I was 100% solid in the understanding of exactly what is going on that causes the look that we're seeing generated on different devices. I was more of a, wait, what if, because the Donkey Kong prompts now the coding is all moved around to squeeze part of Donkey Kong Jr. in there, that it would, it would create uh, a different girder stage generating a uh, generation so i tested it it was just a theory where i'm like what if you know but lucky for me i was in a location that had all this stuff and uh you know had the equipment had uh arcade boards and a tech shop if something happened and uh so i tested it and it didn't produce anything that I was looking for. Not only that, it wasn't even close. Right. So I'm like, all right. And it sucked because the reality is also at the time, I had no reason to question anything anybody was telling me. I was really seeking an answer. Well, And, um, and I like, think yeah, that's you know, what I'm a gonna... lot of us are trying to seek. Right. And I'm like, I'm going to find it. I'm really going to find it for you guys. That's how confident I was and they had me. But eventually, you you start understanding certain patterns and the way the memory is accessed and the speed of the board. And you're like, wait a minute. It literally cannot, per design, do certain things that we're actually seeing it do because it's all logic-based chips. It's it's not a computer that's booting up with a bunch of operating systems and kernels and then it runs on top of something kind of like like Fix It Felix is literally a Windows computer 
with a program of Fixed Felix running on top. Where if that game crashes, all of a sudden you see the the mouse. Right. No, no, no. The Donkey Kong board and the old arcade boards do what they do because that's what they're designed to do. They're not they're not logic based. They're, well, right. they're, they're logic based, but they're not they're not thinking machines. They're just yeah. Do, you do this, do that. Yeah, do this, they're, do that. yeah. They're they're basically just taking in inputs by whatever you know the the command chip or whatever like it's it's it, it's basically human made you know we only put it into whatever you know we we put the inputs in and the computer basically follows it right right but they're not very smart machines no because I mean, otherwise it'd work itself i mean like today's like smartphones those are really smart machines we're literally even if you're running an emulator on that, the thing is powerful enough and smart enough to run 30 other things in the background. Where... Oh, Dwayne? Dwayne's here? Wait, I'm, I'm du- sure. Dwayne Richard? That'd be neat, but I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure. Yeah, someone said, you hear, Dwayne? Uh, someone said uh, uh, about uh, the answers. <laughs> uh, I mean... I don't know. I mean, I, I guess when people say MAME, it's like a general term, you know, because, you know, everybody knows what MAME is. It's an emulator. I mean, it. a lot of people aren't even considering maybe a different emulator than MAME. Could, I mean, that, but we don't know. The, the situation comes down to MAME is the closest thing that looks like the transitions and the anomalies that you see in the tapes. It's it's actually the closest, most accurate depiction that you're gonna find on the tapes. the The problem is in here. I'm you know I'm I'm now getting in a very 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 fine line here. Is that Legally, it's hard to prove multiple questions, which is what model was it, what brand of computer, what type of video card, how much uh, memory was in the video card, what kind of operating system. You know, at the end, you can't answer these questions. Yeah, unless you were there. Right, and then simply it's like, then what do you know? I mean, or, or you, you know, know, or if you're the person out. that made the computer, or you know, right, right. It, it's the the variables are huge, and it comes back to the first conversation we had in the first twenty minutes, which was if you really want to get technical, yeah, I can't answer those, no matter how much testing I did, but I also can't even answer if Billy actually played the game. <laughs> because based on the stuff I worked on, you never see the person that's playing the game that's recorded on those videos. So I mean, it's you know, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, it's a slippery it, slope. So the only thing anybody can really state is what is one hundred percent factually uh, factual that we can answer. Which is, man, let me get the scratcher. The, <laughs> which is, I can, I can 100% tell you that the images produced on those tapes did not come from an arcade. I can tell you that 100% based right. on hours of watching other arcade machines and those arcade machines and testing the converter that was uh, stated to have been used and, and on and on and on and on. Oh, yeah. Like that, and you know, people don't realize how how much time that is. You know, it takes to do any of that stuff. Yo, what's that silver thing in your hand, homie? This is a back scratcher. <laughs> in, in an antenna form, ah. and you know, when you're when you're big and fat, your arms don't touch every part of your back anymore That's or, or if you want to get in the technical aspects of it <laughs> yeah no. 
It, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's the greatest gift I ever received. Exactly. From a friend recently. I'm like, it's awesome. It's a joke. <laughs> I know. But yes, it's a back scratcher. There, I got it out of the way. I'm sorry, I know it was... Yeah, it's kind of distracting because I, I do the same thing. I'm I'm usually fiddling with something uh, while I'm talking because, you know, I don't have a fidget spinner. I usually have a fidget spinner, but <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah okay. do somewhere. I don't know where, uh, but uh, I guess that's really it. I mean, I've, I've had a really interesting conversation, a lot to take in. Uh, I mean... You you certainly have a different opinion than I do about this, but I mean, I, I I can honestly say this was interesting. No, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so uh, uh, Steve said it's a magic wand that makes emulation real. <laughs> yeah, well, I I'm not done yet. I got I got stuff I'm working on. Right. But, but that's that's for uh, the near future, and near future is in in a few days. In a few days. But yeah, you 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 have a YouTube channel. Uh, you do tech talk stuff. Uh... <laughs> right, right, yeah. Then uh, my, I have, I had multiple channels, but with all the changes on YouTube, I'm down to only one channel that's monetized. Yeah. So it's. Like, and this this channel ain't monetized at all. I mean, I just do this for fun. Uh, but I appreciate having you on here, sir. I mean, this has just been interesting. You know, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You know, the the tech stuff. I'm I'm still trying to ramble my head around it. It's it's tough stuff. It really is but, tough stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it's still fascinating. I mean, you you say it's boring. I I just find it fascinating because I mean. Oh, no, I the way I you love explain tech. it. I love tech stuff. It's just it's one of those, you know, boring subjects. It's it's if I had to explain it in layman's terms, it's literally like going out on a first date with a really hot chick and all you're talking about is Star Trek. Yeah. It's um it's believe me, she's not interested and she's drying up. <laughs> if you know <laughs> what I mean. Oh it's, yeah. It, it's that kind of it's that kind of talk but in with this subject it is important and how do you how do you get that message out where where people are like oh you know i I get that it comes down to the tech work and the in this case but um when you try to explain it in it's it's just one of those subjects that people you know, people love their TVs, but they really don't give a a, a damn uh, how it works. The, the chat. <laughs> oh yeah, big respect for all the time you put into this, Carlos. Uh, if she's not interested in Star Trek, then she's not the one. Correct. Yep. Correct. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad I was able to have you on here. Uh, Is she interested? She's ugly, or she has an Adam. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> it's, it's trouble uh but i appreciate you coming on here and uh is there anything you'd like to plug uh your channel your twitter facebook whatever no, no i'm good i normally don't do these i don't do these so um you got uh you got a few people there on the chat now that uh uh, even Teddy, Teddy might be interested in speaking. He, um, I'm assuming he he has a lot to, uh, um, a lot to share. Oh yeah, I mean oh. Tim, if you're watching this, I would love to interview you. Uh, just email me. Uh, I have my email in my uh this in my uh, channel description. You know, that's I'm how Carlos was able. Yeah, that's how Carlos was able to contact me. I mean, heck, I'd I'd love to interview anybody, you know, because I mean, I'm I'm such a small channel. <laughs> I mean, I only have like 300 subscribers, you know, so this this means a lot to me, you know, just to be able to discuss and have a conversation about this. I mean, even though it's two different sides, I mean, 
we we at least I, I think people were expecting us to you know actually spit fire at each other. Ah, oh, Billy's a cheater, blah blah blah, and you know I, I think that's what people expect is blood, and that's not the way we should you know discourse. Um, I, I think people just need to listen to both sides, you know. Well, the the problem also. The problem also lies that everything, all this drama that's going on isn't new. It's happened multiple times, sometimes multi, a few years apart. But, you know, I was talking to someone earlier and I said, you know, the the big difference now that's going on is a f- couple years ago, all you had was a handful of people that got, you know, got duped and got it really bad in the rear, but they all were scattered throughout the United States. And now the internet age has really allowed people that feel the same way that were, that feel they were duped or, or right. treated unfairly to now unifyly can be connected in one space. Yeah. And the voice is now louder. Yep, cancel culture. Well, well, cancel culture unfortunately is a is a sad side effect of crybabies. But <laughs> the reality the reality is there's there really are people in this community that were were so slandered and so so mistreated, you know, just because they wanted truth and integrity. That just just the idea. Of of speaking to someone of the subject, like puts them almost in a PTSD state, and a lot of people were. Uh, there's a lot of people in the community that, you know, that you know they made a really great achievement, and then when right. they turn on the magazine, well, open the magazine, they're like, "Wait a second, this th- this is modified, and I'm I don't have a lot enough voice." For anybody to care and and now it's it's gotten pretty darn big but, but the thing look, though look, yeah look listen the truth also is that um after the scores were removed billy went out and he started live twitching he started playing games he started uh, redoing his scores look i've been to events where he's at he's still a draw People come to see him. Right. People come for him to sign autographs and stuff. So he's still a pool. He, he's still a draw at the shows. Okay? Right. And, you know, you can't convince me differently because I've seen it. And everything was getting quiet. You know, things were just moving forward. And all of a sudden, bam, this lawsuit thing happens and it starts all over again. And then the bam, the banning of of uh, Dwayne Richards videos and it just gets the talk happening again and then bam and bam and it, it's constantly when you think it's all cooling down boom it 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 just comes back yeah and it, it's it's unfortunate oh yeah i mean the the same thing uh is sort of going on with a certain voice actor that i've been uh sticking up for you know Vic Mignogna um you've heard about him right Vic Mignogna I'm bad with names yeah he's a voice actor uh he he basically got accused of sexual harassment and you know there's no evidence to prove that you know their their claims uh are even true uh they can't even keep their story straight and and most of the stories they came up with is like it's the same thing but uh, but he decided to sue them. He went about it, and it went rather quickly in the past, like six or seven months. Uh, the 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 trial ended up, you know, uh, the they they dismissed the trial completely. Uh, but he's going to go for an appeal. So I mean, I don't know how quick this lawsuit may go with Billy. Uh, it could take a long time, depending on you know how the case goes, if they even go about it. I mean, right now, from what I've heard, they haven't even filed any paperwork yet. I mean, they, they've only sent letters. 
Right. Well, that that's what I've heard. And, and that's seen, the next but, step, I guess, is they're going to start sending paperwork out. <laughs> but I, I, I personally don't really know. I mean, there are certain things where it's like you, you think it's going one way and all of a sudden, right. all of a sudden it's like I send out a text to a friend. It's like, oh, my gosh, look at look what's going on now. But look on now. It's but like, I will oh. say this though, it is really hard to win a defamation case. It really is. Like it is difficult. Really difficult. But yeah. um yeah. <laughs> I believe it. I just don't I just don't see it going that far. Right. I'm I mean there's just there's just so many things that just it's a puzzle with a bunch of missing pieces, and it's like, no. Right. It doesn't work like that. Right. Well, uh, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Uh, this this has been really good. I mean, having a good discussion, and hopefully maybe one day I bring you back on and we could talk more about tech stuff. Yeah, look, we got one thumbs down, so that means... Uh, I'm gonna get a call tomorrow about Uh-oh. something I said. I'm and sorry. Then I, and then I'm gonna have to play scared. And then I have to remind myself that I'm broke, so you can't take anything from me. Which I'm is a sorry. plus. <laughs> plus. No, no, I'm not worried about it. But uh I'm- Right. <laughs> but-, but I appreciate having you on here and I'd love to have you back on. We could talk more about tech stuff. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so, um, I'll uh, try I, making it more interesting. Oh, yeah. That's uh, what we have now. Uh, let's see. We have 13 people watching. Wow. Well, I think we picked that 17. Yeah, we picked that 17. Gosh. It's uh, not bad. Oh, Take yeah. That. I'm, I have friends. <laughs> oh, I yeah. You have friends. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Carlos, for being on here. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, this, they've, <laughs> these comments are great. Oh, yeah, these comments are. Uh, but I I have to end the stream, uh, unfortunately, because I'm tired. I've, I've been up since like 7 o'clock this morning. And, you know... I, I just, I gotta go sleep. <laughs> no, absolutely. Well, I had a great time. Oh, yeah. Great. yeah. Uh, and, where, where, uh, where can people oh. find you on Twitter? Oh, um, you can send all hate mail to Cache18. <laughs> C-A-S-H-E-1-8. That's where I'm at Twitter. I normally don't answer it. I normally <laughs> check it very little. But um, that's the place. That's the place you you can you can send your uh, your hate mail. All right. Well, you know, like when it comes to this subject, it's the thing I get the most. Oh yeah. It's like I hope your arteries clog out. It's like, well, I hope you know I got four arteries. <laughs> it's take a while. Oh yeah. Uh, sure. As for me, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Canvas Pirates. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm probably going to stream something else tomorrow other than this. I, I think uh, for right now, I guess, you know, uh, we just have to wait. You know, wait and see what happens. Let's see what happens, brother. But hopefully maybe by then I'll have a way of explaining this stuff in a much more fun oh, yeah. way. That people will be like, oh, all right, that makes sense. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's a problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. Uh, you all have a good night. <laughs> all right, everybody, thank you for your time. I'm trying a new call sign, so keep eating bacon. Okay. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs>